Toss. The deep man is Melvin Anderson, who is averaging almost 25 yards per return for the Golden Gophers this year. Doing the booting for Michigan, Rick Sutkowitz. Who kicks him barefoot. And we are underway for Minneapolis. On the one-yard line, Anderson. Stop shy of the 20-yard line. Tackle was made by Tim Schultz. Anderson brought it back 17 yards, but the Michigan kicking team did their job tackling him inside the 20-yard line. So Minnesota gets a chance to see what they can do against this Michigan defense. Ricky Foggy, David Puck, Valdez Baylor, Andy Hare starting at the flanker spot today. Mel Anderson the split in. And up front, good size. Rectum, Lilleberg, Hitchcock, Wolkow, Hobbins, and Starks. Lou Holtz on the sidelines, hoping that he can steer his team to an upset. One of the few times he'll be standing still. First down to the 17-yard line. And the give is to the first man through the fullback, David Puck. He got it out across the 20-yard line to about the 22. Mike Mallory, number 42, who is the son of Indiana coach Bill Mallory, making the tackle. And here's a look at the individuals who make up this outstanding Michigan defense. Messner, Harris, Hammerstein, Scarcelli, Mallory, Moeller, Akers, Cochran, Hicks, Gant, and Rivers in the backfield. Second down, five yards to go for the first down. Again, the game is to the fullback, David Puck. He got it out to about the 24-yard line, about three yards shy of the first down. Mike Hammerstein, Billy Harris making the stop for the Wolverines. The plan of attack looks like to me to hand the ball straight off to the fullback. Michigan's defense has good maneuverability. So what, what the plan of attack will be early is to go right straight at those defensive linemen and maybe pick up a couple of first downs. Then they can maneuver off of that and fake to the fullback and run the quarterback option. After a two-yard gain, it's third down and three. The ball at the 24-yard line. Andy Hare in motion. Again, the give is to the fullback puck, and he's got the first down all the way out to the 35-yard line before Tony Gant made the stop for Michigan. Should be great encouragement for this Minnesota offense. That's Puck's third carry already. He's got 18 yards. Last one, 11 yards. Buck, a senior from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, 6'4", 216 pounds. Straight ahead, right at that Michigan defense, Mark Messner. First down to the 35-yard line. Anderson wide left. Gary Couch in motion. Again, it's the fullback, David Puck. Gaining about two yards before Hammerstein made the stop. Gary Puck, or David Puck, excuse me, is going to be a workhorse today. That is, unless they start burying that and start faking it to the fullback. And that's what I think they're going to look like, looks like they're going to do. And that's why Ricky Foggy can make those big plays. You know, all of a sudden, fake it to the fullback and throw the pass long downfield to Mel Anderson or big Kevin Starks. So far, Minnesota's been running out of the eye formation, not out of the wishbone, which they've run all year. That's hair in motion. This time, Foggy keeping, pitching to Valdez Baylor. Baylor out to the 40, out to the 45, first down for the Golden Gophers. Out to the 49-yard line, Mike Mallory and Brad Cochran finally made the stop, but it's another first down for Minnesota. And a 10-yard gain on that quarterback option, just as we said. He's going to fake it now right into the fullback. Watch the fullback, David Puck, into the line. He fakes it, and he goes down the line of scrimmage. A great pitch out to Baylor, and Baylor up the field for a 10-yard gain. Good blocking downfield, too, by uh, Mel Anderson. So it's a first down at the Minnesota 49, just underway. Again, out of the eye of formation. Long count by Ricky Foggy. Foggy looking for running room on the near side. Will dive ahead for a couple of yards, getting across the 50 to the 49-yard line. Mike Hammerstein, number 66, making the stop for the Wolverines. Well, that was well played by the Michigan defense there. They were cross-charging to the short side of the field. And Hammerstein just was able to stop Ricky Foggy for nothing, and he couldn't pitch it out to his halfback, Valdez Baylor, so they had to settle for one yard. So now it's second down and nine, the ball right at midfield. Again, they line up.
himself in the eye. Richardson and Richardson got it down to about the 46 yard line it'll be third down and six Andy Moeller making the stop for Michigan well, Roselle Richardson's a big kid he's a freshman he hasn't played very much and here he comes off the field picked up three or four yards we're starting out already now these third down plays are very very big plays in a game like this especially when we think it's going to be a defensive battle the ball just inside the 46 yard line Baylor comes out wide left. And down goes Ricky Foggy. Mike Hammerstein broke through. Foggy didn't have a chance. He was snowed under at midfield. Did you see him come off of that line of scrimmage? I thought definitely he was offside. Watch how quick Hammerstein comes off the line of scrimmage, splits the, the offensive players, and tackles Ricky Foggy before he's even even got a chance to move away from the center. Adam Kelly in to do the punting now for Minnesota. I thought for sure he was offside. That's quickness. Eric Campbell is the deep man for Michigan. Standing at his own 10-yard line. Good rush, but the punt gotten away by Kelly. Down to the 8-yard line. Campbell up across the 15, up across the 20. Good return out to the 27-yard line. And that's where the Wolverines will put the ball in play. The tackle was made by Rich Reed. So Michigan gets the ball for the first time this afternoon. They'll put it in play on their own 26-yard line. We'll be right back. I thought for sure we would see a yellow flag uh, uh, on the field, uh, Pete. A 42-yard kick by Kelly, a 19-yard return by Campbell. So Michigan starts out on their own 27-yard line. Decent field position. The quarterback is Jim Harbaugh. The running backs behind him are Gerald White and Danny Morris. In motion is John Colasar. The game is to the tailback, Jamie Morris. He didn't get much, maybe a yard, before Steve Thompson, big number 96, made the tackle for Minnesota. Morris, a sophomore, only 5'7", 175 pounds out of Ayer, Massachusetts. And there's a look at the rest of the Michigan backfield and receivers. Fine quarterback, Jim Harbaugh. And a very big team up front. They have tremendous size. Beginning with John Elliott, who's 6'7", 285 pounds, and they call him the quick tackle. Yeah, and John Vitelli, 6'1", 277. After a two-yard gain, it's second down eight. Eric Campbell in motion. Harbaugh is back to throw on second down. He dumps it off to Jamie Morris. Morris looking for running room up the middle. Now heads to the far sideline. He's got a first down. He's out to midfield. And down he goes inside the 40-yard line. A great run after the catch there by Jamie Morris. And John Vitelli, number 67, made the opening block right in front of, of Jamie Morris. With his quickness, they had a screen out to the right. Jimmy Harbaugh went back, threw it out to Jamie Morris. And that good block sprung him loose. But that great quickness. Now watch the quick, watch the block out there. There's a good block by Vitelli. And now watch him change speed, changes to... Uh, his position and he's going down the sideline some good blocks out in front of him and Jamie Morris has a first down and a 35 yard game first down at the 36 yard line of Minnesota Harbaugh gives to the fullback Gerald White White gets it down to the 30 yard line a gain of about six yards Larry Joyner number 20 who's listed as a defensive end but plays more of an outside linebacker type of position there's a look at the rest of the defensive line Christofferson who's also listed as a defensive end, also more like an outside linebacker there are the two guys in the middle Nigerian and Holmes you'll hear their names a lot and they're good ones second down four yards to go after the six-yard gain the ball on the 30-yard line of the Gophers the game is to White, and right up the middle he goes for a first down to the 25-yard line. Looks like a first down for the University of Michigan in position now uh, for the field goal. Bruce Holmes, Larry Joyner making the stop. So the Wolverines advancing the ball very impressively in their first possession. We have a player down in the field. It's a Michigan player. Looks like it might be uh, the fullback, Gerald White. I think it is Gerald White. He's all right, though. Seems to be. 
Might have gotten the wind knocked out of him. Well, he and Bruce Holmes seemed like they were sort of stuck together down there. Maybe they hit each other so hard that they couldn't get them apart. They had a much big number 88 get over there. There he is. That's why they're that's why they're laying down on the ground. I think he did they're get the wind knocked together. Out of Both of them. First down at the 25-yard line. Here comes the noise. Harbaugh pitching to Morris. Morris accelerating up across the 20 inside the 15-yard line. He's got another first down. Jill Christofferson making the stop for Minnesota. And some good blocking up front by Eric Campbell and uh, the fullback Gerald White and John Colasar right out there in front. Watch these blocks out front. And, and, and little Jamie White, I mean Morris, he, he just finds his little hole there and, and, and puts on the speed and picks up 11 yards and a first down on the 14-yard line. Bob Perryman is checked into the backfield now. As Jamie Morris gets a rest. Perryman, number 37. First down at the 14-yard line. Harbaugh giving to White. White inside the 10, inside the 5-yard line. And Michigan, very impressive on their first possession here. Donovan Small finally making the stop there for Minnesota. And again, there's some great blocking up front. You know, those halfbacks and fullbacks don't make those yards uh, unless somebody's blocking up front for them. It was a good block by uh, Bob Perriman the last time, and of course that offensive line. That was a 10-yard gain. He's carried it three times now for 21 yards. The but they have two fullbacks in now. Just shy of the first down as they mark it inside the five-yard line. They have to get to the four-yard line for the first down. Perryman and White lined up in the eye behind Harbaugh. They gave us to White. And he's down to about the two-yard line before Steve Thompson made the stop. They may be even give his forward motion to the one-yard line. Again, good blocking up front. Nice hole for Gerald White. Picks up those four or five yards. And you know how tough it gets down there, don't you, partner, when you get inside that ten-yard line? Watch that good blocking up front there. You see, that's a good hole for him to get down all the way to the one-yard line. First and goal. John Vitale, big number 67, 6'1", 277 pounds. Really moved some people out of there. He sure did. It's a first and goal at the one-yard line. This is White. Touchdown. A very impressive drive by the Wolverines. And White takes it over from one yard out. Key play, though, by Jamie Morris. Here he goes over the top. Here goes White over the top. Six points for Michigan. That key play I was talking about is the screen off to the right and Jamie Morris picking up a lot of yards and getting it into uh, into Minnesota territory. So now the extra point attempt by Mike Gillette. have taken a 7-0 lead with 6 minutes 12 seconds remaining in quarter number one here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Here in Minneapolis. That's Lou Holtz as a kid. <laughs> dress and look like Lou Holtz. There he is as a kid. He's growing younger instead of older. They had a Lou Holtz look-alike contest here at the Dome today. That's the reason for all those folks who do resemble the Minnesota coach. Anderson at the one-yard line. Right up the middle, gets it out across the 20 to about the 22-yard line. That's where the Golden Gophers will put it in play. Well, there's some good hitting going on down on this field. Even though Michigan was very impressive on that drive, I am positive that this Minnesota team will not give up the least bit. They got a great quarterback in Ricky Foggy, and they got some good receivers in, in Mel Anderson. And uh, Andy here, and of course, big Kevin Starks at tight end. Of course, what Michigan is hoping, they hope to win here today and beat Ohio State next week. And if Iowa loses a ball game in the next two weeks and Michigan wins their next two, that sends the Wolverines to the Rose Bowl. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. <laughs> Again, Minnesota winds up in the eye. They haven't shown us the wishbone yet today. Foggy still has it. And out to the 30-yard line before Ivan Hicks. Makes the stop on Ed Penn in there at the tailback spot. 
And a good block by Andy Hare out there. You know, he was getting in the, in the halfback's way, the defensive halfback, uh, Brad Cochran's way out there, and there was just no way that he could get around him, and that's how they picked up the uh, six yards. Andy Hare made a, a flanker blocking. How do you like that? After the six-yard gain by Penn, it's second down and four at the 29-yard line. Gary Couch in motion. The fullback, David Puck, punches it out across the 30 before Mark Messner, number 60, brings him down for Michigan. Shy of the first down by a couple of yards. There's our scoring drive, man. He plays uh, 73 yards, 346, and a one-yard uh, touchdown run by White. Uh, just sort of walked right into the end zone when Michigan had the ball offensively. Of course, the way an play on that drive was the pass to Jamie Morris, which was. ate up 42 yards. Mike Mallory being helped off the field, shaken up on that last play. Yeah, he went off on his own, though, so I think he'll be okay. He's Tommy Sh Todd Schulte, number 41, is his replacement in that middle middle linebacker spot. He and Andy Moeller will now take care of that middle linebacking. Third and one. Michigan with a 7-0 lead. Again, they line up in the eye. Foggy keeping. Down goes the ball. It's loose, and Michigan's got it. Ed Penn couldn't handle the pitch from Ricky Foggy, and the Wolverines have recovered the fumble. Andy Moeller, number 49, fell on the football. And they made that break. They tackled everybody. They tackled Ricky Foggy. They tackled the tailback, causing the fumble. And Michigan recovered an Ed Penn fumble on the 27-yard line. Michigan first and 10. There it is. On the ground, alert play by the Michigan defense. Well, the Wolverines with an excellent chance to get some more points now, just inside the Minnesota 27. That's what makes a good defense when you can turn the ball over. It's going to be very difficult for Minnesota if Michigan happens to get in again very quickly. White and Morris, the running backs behind Harbaugh. The give is to the fullback, Gerald White, right up the middle, inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line, Christofferson, number 39, in on the tackle for Minnesota. And we have an injured player, Dwayne Dutrell, number 45, shaken up. The left cornerback for the Golden Gophers. And he's a good one. He's got 47 tackles already this year. Looks like he's got a pinched nerve in his shoulder. So the clock stops with 445 Gerald, remaining in the first quarter. Gerald Wright uh, has six carries so far for 33 yards. He's moving the ball right up the field. You know, we've talked so much about the Michigan defense, and everybody does talk about the Michigan defense, but let's give this offensive credit. <laughs> They've come on offensively a lot stronger than a lot of people felt they would. Oh, they sure have. And, you know, the one thing I'm impressed with is I, I haven't seen Michigan this year, and neither have you. The quickness that they come off of the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively, is, is unbelievable. And, of course, the defense can't make penetration when they're getting hit that quickly. On that last carry, an eight-yard gain by White, so it's second down and two at the 19-yard line. Harbaugh giving to White again. This time, he couldn't find any running room. But I think he got far enough for the first down. We'll see where they mark the forward progress. And while we watch that, we'll pause five seconds for station identification. It's not a first down. I thought he had forward motion up a little bit farther. But the referee says, nope, it's on the 17-yard line. It'll be third down and one. Two tight ends have checked in there now for Michigan. And the fullback. Uh, they have a double fullback offense now. Bob Perryman and Gerald White lined up behind Harbaugh. Third and inches. The give is to White. I don't know if he got it. He dove over the top. Some good hitting there by Minnesota, but he looked like he got enough for the first down. It'll be close to the 15-yard line. Doug Mueller, Steve Thompson, Anthony Burke all in on the stop for the Gophers. Just a little extra effort here by Gerald White. Watch, he doesn't see his hole, so he just dives over for the first down, and it's an important first down. We look like we're going to measure, but I believe that it will be a first down. Well, they'll bring the chains out here, see if the Wolverines have a first down or whether they'll be in a position to try a field goal. 
looks like they they have this bull elephant. Yeah, it is a first down. First down, Michigan. Michigan, when they get down close to the goal line, they put in their their bull elephant uh, backfield along with two tight ends. And with those big offensive linemen, they just about can steamroll anybody. So it's a first down at the 16-yard line. Three and a half minutes remaining, first quarter. Michigan on top, 7-0. Gettis, number 81, the tight end. You know, he's got seven touchdowns already this year, so you got to watch him down on the goal line. Harbaugh marks out the signals. The game is to Perryman, and Perryman gets inside the 10-yard line, down to about the 8. Donovan Small, number 35. Anthony Burke, number 95, making the tackle for Minnesota. Did you feel that hit up here? <laughs> Wow. So far today, Michigan's been able to run the ball almost at will. They've Incredible. Big games. The only other team that we saw do that this year was Michigan State. And of course, they got a pretty good fair country tailback, don't they? They sure do. Lorenzo White now leads the nation in rushing. Second down three, the ball at the nine-yard line. for running room on the far side. Can't find the corner to turn. Down he goes at the 11-yard line. A loss of about two yards on that play. Doug Mueller, Anthony Burke in on the stop for the Gophers. <laughs> Gerald White just couldn't make the block out here. Watch the fullback. He misses this block, and Jamie White, Jamie White was able to get outside, but he couldn't go very far with Burke and a host of other players making the tackle for a loss. Now the noise begins to reverberate around the Metrodome. It is third down and five. And too much noise for Jim Harbaugh. The referee calls a timeout. He just is not fooling around, and they had a meeting last night about this, and, and, and I was discussing... I was discussing this matter with uh, Jim Kemmering, Kemmerling, and he said, I had three hours of meetings last night. I don't want to talk about it anymore today. I'm going to make the decision when I have to. <laughs> One reason, a lot of people say, well, why is it the noise such a factor in this stadium? It's because of the dome. Anytime you play in a dome stadium, that noise just echoes off the roof. It has no place to go. That's right. Except back to us. And, of course, the Minnesota fans try to make that a factor when they play here in Minneapolis. Won't get any quieter now, I guarantee it. Third down and five. There's always one way to quiet that down. When you get the playoff, you score. The Minnesota players signaling to the crowd to quiet down just a bit so they can play. It's Minnesota's responsibility. The home team has the responsibility of crowd control. And there's Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh, Jr. from Palo Alto, California. Okay, he's going to try it, but the noise will just increase. Nope. Another timeout by the referee. This could be a very long game. We're liable to be here till tomorrow. Well, of course, the fans, once the fans get the idea that they've distracted the other team, They'll just keep it up all afternoon. Well, that's unfortunate because the crowd should not become a factor in the outcome of a football game. You know, this happened back in 1903 when Minnesota tied Michigan. There were two minutes left in the football game, and the crowd came out of the stand. They tore the goalpost down, and they never did play that last two minutes of the football game. So it goes all the way back to 1903. The Little Brown Jug rivalry. And it's a tough one. And a fun one. And once again, Jim Harbaugh not satisfied with all the noise. The coaches on the Minnesota sideline trying to quiet down the crowd. Harbaugh is going to try it again. Or will he be able to make himself heard. He's going to try now. Third down. 
Five yards to go for the first down. Harbaugh back to throw. Firing. It is incomplete. Intended for Darrell White. Well, after all that time, the incomplete pass will make it fourth down when a field goal situation. Mike Gillette checks into the game. Well, a big play was made prior to that play when, when Michigan could not pick up any yardage uh, around left in with Jamie Morse. The ball will be spotted at the 18-yard line. This will be a 28-yard attempt for Mike Gillette. He has made good on 14 out of 20 field goal efforts this year. The boot by Gillette is good. And so the Wolverines of Michigan now lead it by a score of 10-0 with a minute and a half remaining in the first quarter. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. When someone talks about a satellite receiver system, the first thing you probably think about is the antenna. Well, Reception Plus would like to remind you that the most important part of a satellite receiver system is here, the picture. Reception Plus is... <laughs> One minute, 29 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Wolverines of Michigan lead the Golden Gophers of Minnesota 10-0. We'll be right back. Ready for the kickoff, Rick Sutkowitz, the barefoot kicker for Michigan, is happy to be playing indoors today. <laughs> Boy, I would be too. We had two inches of snow up here yesterday, and, and the snow's still coming down. It's cold. Here's the kickoff. Melvin Anderson is back deep for Minnesota. That kick sails right at the goal line. Anderson runs it out to the 10, and he gets only to the 11-yard line before the tackle is made by Ken Mooton. 11-yard return, and Michigan down there very quickly. It was a great kick off into that right deep corner, and it, they weren't able to bring it out and, and get it into any position. And, and you know, uh, Minnesota has not really started in good field position. And then when they did have good field position, Michigan stopped them on a third down play, and they had to punt the ball. Looks like Melvin Anderson got banged up a little on that tackle. Again, they line up in that eye formation. They still haven't shown the wishbone today. Nope. Got a timeout on the field. That last drive Michigan had was uh, they possessed the ball three minutes, 29 seconds. There were six plays, and Gillette kicked a 28-yard field goal. He's now 15 out of 21. Got a penalty marker thrown down around the 11-yard line. Let's see what this is all about. Offside. Well, what happened is one of the linemen probably came out put his hand on the ground and then picked it up and put it back up so there that's an offside penalty and that moves the ball all the way back to the six yard line where it'll be first and 15. Uh, you can't make a mistake down Dead here. Dead ball now. offside the offense he lined up in the zone to the center touch the ball first down. So now the Golden Gophers have their backs to the wall. Thank Railing you. Kent nothing. Thanks for the explanation Jim Kimmerling. Ricky Foggy's running backs behind him are David Puck, the fullback. The tailback is Valdez Baylor. Foggy is back to throw. The pass is incomplete. Out around the five-yard line, David Puck, the intended receiver. And I'll tell you what, Ricky Foggy had to get rid of that ball. Ooh, he sure did. Big Billy Harris came in on him. Six-foot, 257-pound uh, junior. He just came off that line of scrimmage. And, of course, he had to throw it out here to Puck. It was a screen off to the left but it was covered well by the Michigan defense. Ricky Foggy hasn't attempted that many passes this year. Coming into this game, hitting on 49% of his passes, but he had thrown only 108 passes. All of them big ones, though. He gets a lot of yards on his completions. Second down, 15. Foggy back to throw again. Firing downfield for Gary Couch. He's down at the 30-yard line. Couch trying to turn the corner. Is back at about the 27. Andy Moeller making the stop for Michigan, but that gets Minnesota out of the hole. It sure does. Michigan was in his own defense. They couldn't get back after Ricky Foggy. Watch him. Ricky's got a lot of time. Watch, watch the defense develop. Good blocking up front. He moves up and sees Gary Couch right in the center of the zone. A good play by Gary Couch and a, and a good catch and a good clear out by Mel Anderson, number 89. That's what made the big hole in the defense. So that's a first down at the 28-yard line. 22-yard game. 
One minute remaining in the opening quarter. The Gophers have the ball, trailing 10-0. Andy Hare in motion. Foggy rolling right, firing for Andy Hare. He's incomplete. Hare had it and lost it. Andy thought he should have had that ball, but it was just a little bit out of his reach. Well thrown, good play, roll out to the right, and Foggy pumped it out there. Probably could have been a first down if, uh, if he could have made that catch, but it would have been a tough catch. So it's now second down and 10 at the 28. Gary Couch and Andy Hare have been rotating at that flanker spot, bringing in the plays from the sidelines. number 17 and Hicks is down at the 39 yard line another turnover and once again the Michigan Wolverines have the ball in excellent field position well, Ivan Hicks just played that ball beautifully looked right into Ricky Foggy's eyes but what happened is there was there was a mix-up with Ricky Foggy didn't get the ball clean from the center watch this right here see he drops the ball when he tries to hand it off to his fullback runs into his fullback was not able to see Hicks when he came up and Hicks with a great off, uh, offensive catch, really. It wasn't an interception. It was almost like a reception. A, a, a great catch by Hicks, and Michigan takes over on the 39-yard line, first and 10. So turnovers have hurt Minnesota early. A fumble, and now an interception. First down at the 39-yard line. Harbaugh pitching to Morris. Morris behind the scoreboard White to about the 37-yard line. Christofferson and Najarian making the stop for Minnesota. Now there's Jamie Morris. He's 5'7", 175 pounds, but he runs with such velocity. Did you hear that hit when he popped into that big Najarian? Wow. He very much resembles his brother, who's now fine running back with the New York Giants and played at Syracuse University. Built along the same lines. A gain of about three yards there. It'll be second down, seven. You better be fast when you're only 5 foot 775 pounds. They may not get a playoff here before the quarter ends. Only three seconds remaining. The clock is moving. And the first quarter has expired. So after one quarter of play here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, it's the Wolverines of Michigan 10 and the Golden Gophers of Minnesota nothing. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. This game is being brought to you in part by Buick and your Buick dealers. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buicks. Pete Van Weeren, Ron Kramer, back with you from the Metrodome, where the second quarter is about to begin. It is 10-0 Michigan. And after the interception by Ivan Hicks, the Wolverines again with excellent field position. Now, this is a good football team. I can't quite understand how they ever lost the game or tied the game with Illinois. Now, they did have it right down on about the nine-yard line uh, when Michigan fumbled against Illinois, which, which tied it. This thing, this whole Big Ten could really be in a knot if Michigan would have tied Illinois. Oh, yes. And it still could be because Iowa has to play Purdue today and Ohio State plays Wisconsin, and then Michigan and Ohio State play next week in Ann Arbor. And this Minnesota team will be playing Iowa. Yeah. That'll be our Big Ten game wow. of the week. There are ten different bowl representatives watching this one today from all over the country. Second down, seven. Polisar's in motion. Harbaugh takes the handoff. Looking downfield. This pass is caught by Eric Caddis, the tight end, at the 30-yard line. Falls to the 29. Bruce Holmes bringing him down. It's a first down. Harbaugh likes to look to his big tight end, six foot six, 225 pounds, down the field. And he rolled out, had plenty of time to get out here to the left. We have a timeout on the field. I think they're going to measure for the first down. But Eric Caddis came from the right side and just sort of hooked up in the middle of his own. And when Harbaugh saw him, he... Popped it right in there, and Caddis made a good catch close to a first down. It looked like it may be. Pick up the of seven yards. brought out, and it is a first down for Michigan. That's Harbaugh's second completion. People having fun up here in Minneapolis again. What a great resurgence in football uh, here at the University of Minnesota. They've done a fantastic job. First down at the 29-yard line. Good 
They split the backs this time. And it's Jamie Morris, the little guy, up to the 24-yard line. A gain of about five. Larry Joyner making the tackle. And a good trap lock up front by uh, Big John Vitelli, number 67, six foot one, 277-pound uh, sophomore from the University of Michigan. That's that's the little kind of little holes that they make when they when they trap. They come from the left and they block out on one of the defensive end. And little Jamie Morris pops through that hole, picks up four or five yards. He's now carried the ball four times, good for 19 yards. They mark the ball right on the 25, so it'll be second down and six. This is the fullback, Gerald White, down to the 22-yard line before Larry Joyner made the stop. Doug Mueller almost made that tackle in the backfield, but White got away and picked up three or four yards. It's another another big for third down play again. It'll be third down and three for Michigan. The ball marked on the 22-yard line. We're in the opening minutes of quarter number two. Michigan leading 10 nothing. And here comes the double fullback backfield again as Bob Perryman checks in, replacing Jamie Morris. So it's Perryman and White behind Harbaugh. The bull elephant backfield and two tight ends. Third down and three. And we had a whistle. They didn't get the playoff in time. Well, what's happening is you know you can't hear everything quite properly. And the noise is a factor, as we said at the beginning of the game. So this hurts Michigan. Back to the 27-yard line goes the football. Dead ball, delay of game, on the offense, third down. Well, we got, we got a flanker coming in, Johnny Kolasar. He's a young kid. He's a freshman, six foot, 190 pounds. They like his speed. Last week, he had three touchdowns against, uh, against a good Purdue team. Kolasar goes out wide to the right side. Paul Jokic comes out wide left. Third down and eight after the five-yard penalty. Harbaugh with a straight drop. Firing for Paul Jokic. He's got him for the Hello. touchdown. Jokic puts a move on Matt Martinez like you can't believe. They had him one-on-one. -on -one. How would you like to call cover a Paul Jokic, number 84, 6'8", 240 pounds, and Martinez is a 5'10", junior, 185 pounds. He ran it down and in, a post pattern, right, perfect, a perfect throw by Jimmy Harbaugh, and it's a touchdown and six points on the board for Michigan. Look at how open he is. He just beat Martinez very badly and into the end zone for a touchdown. Gillette in to attempt the extra point. As the Wolverines attempt to go 17 points up. The kick is good. And with 13 minutes and three seconds remaining in the first half, it is now the Wolverines 17. And the Golden Gophers nothing. Four-cylinder engines. On the Michigan sideline, the Wolverines up by 17. And in the defense, it's been the difference. The fumble recovery and the pass interception. Here's the catch in the end zone by Melvin Anderson. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. And, and, and this is and this is something this is something that Minnesota did not want to do. You take your you change and you carry this rip. You know what I'm saying? You gotta beat him with quickness. Because he's up high and you just spray him on two. Okay? That's coach. That's right. We should be able to run a great 24 play The offensive inside. line coach. Right, Chad? And he never right quits. Call. He's Can still got him going. He's still keeping this team high as a kite. 13.03 left in the second period. And Minnesota, as I was mentioning, did not want to get behind by 17 points with the kind of offense they have. Five plays on the last uh, on the last touchdown, 39 yards. First down at the 20-yard line. The Golden Gophers trying to get something going offensively. Hopkin Bear, the running back. Anderson's wide left, Bear is wide right. Ricky Foggy straight ahead to the 28-yard line. A gain of eight yards for the Minnesota quarterback. Jim Scarcelli and Mike Mallory making the stop. Quarterback sneak by Ricky Foggy. What he did is he looked at the defensive line. Michigan's cross-charging. They cross-charged to the left. Ricky Foggy ran to the right and picked up nine yards. A quarterback sneak. You don't see that very often anymore, do you? He has now gained 11 yards on three carries. Second down and one. At 
the Minnesota 29. Now they line up in that wishbone for the first time today. That's the fullback, David Puck, out for the first down at the 32-yard line. Andy Muller and Mike Mallory making the hit for Michigan. Straight, a, straight ahead was David Puck. Now has six carries, 25 yards. Now, this has been the area of the field where Minnesota has been having problems. They've turned the ball over twice to Michigan from right about this spot. One on a fumble and one intercepted pass by Hicks. First down to the 32. Long count by Ricky Foggy. He's looking for running room on the near sideline find any. Down he goes for a loss of two yards. Andy Moeller, number 49, got in to pull down Foggy. Andy Moeller, from his middle linebacker position, filled when one of the guards pulled. He filled, came up from behind, and tackled Ricky Foggy from behind. Watch him there, number 49. See him follow? He's following the quarterback, and, and, and it stops him from pitching the ball back to Valdez Baylor. So after a two-yard loss, it's now second down and 12. Is it poor David Puck and Puck didn't see it coming. It falls incomplete, but Ricky Foggy really had to get rid of that one in a hurry. The blitz was on Michigan's defense. Jim Scarcelli wasn't touched over there, and 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 Ricky Foggy saw that the blitz was on. Just tried to pump it off uh, over to David Puck, and if David Puck would have been looking, he could have picked up a lot of yards. So the incompletion now makes it third down and twelve. This is not a good position for the Minnesota Gophers to be in because they're not this type of team where they can have third and 10, third and 12. They have to have the third and one, two, and three yards. They send Anderson wide left. Andy Hare is also out there on the left side. Back to throw Foggy, that little push ahead to Kevin Starks. That'll be ruled an incomplete pass. And Minnesota will have to give the ball back to Michigan. Billy Harris, the middle guard, was right there. They tried that little pitch into the center, watch him go back to throw the ball, and he just flips it. That's that's that front flip. It's an intercept. It's a it's a pass that uh, is incomplete. That's all. There he is, big number 56, Billy Harris, right on it. Adam Kelly in to do the kicking. It's blocked, and at the 34-yard line, it goes out of bounds. So once again, the Wolverines come up with a big play. will get the football back in excellent field position. David Arnold got through. Just got his hands on it. Of course, Michigan again has great field. Watch Arnold. He goes right for the ball. Gets a part of that ball. He, he didn't go at the man. He went at the ball, and that's how you block punts. Big play for Michigan defense again. And that will go in the record books as a three-yard punt. And it gives Michigan the ball back on the 33-yard line. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. A little over 11 minutes remaining in the first half. Michigan with a 17-0 lead. They've just gotten the ball back on the Minnesota 33-yard line. After a block punt. Harbaugh back to throw. Can't find an open receiver. Heads for the sideline. Gets out of bounds at about the 31. He picks up a couple of yards. Nobody was open. He was looking downfield for his big flanker. Paul Jokic, 6'8", 240 pounds. Harbaugh saw that he was covered, decided to pick up and just run down the sideline, get out of bounds. It'll be second down and eight. Ball just inside the 31-yard line. You know what's happening. This Michigan offensive and defensive line in the trenches are just, I mean, they're awesome. I've never seen a team get off the ball as quickly offensively and defensively in, in the trench. Second down. of maroon shirted Gophers. Peter Najarian, Anthony Burke, Steve Thompson all in on that tackle. There's Peter Najarian, a good tackle. Watch him. Here he's on ISO. Look at the good reaction. He gets rid of the blocker in front of him and sticks his nose right in there and he makes that gang tackle for a very short gain on uh, Gerald White. It'll be third down and four yards to go. Campbell goes out wide right. 
Third and four at the 27. Once again, the noise begins here at the Dome. Harbaugh back to throw. The pass is caught by Gerald White. Down he goes at the 21-yard line, but he's got a first down. Joe Christofferson making the stop for Minnesota. <laughs> Gerald White caught that ball out there. He really created a crowd. Did you hear those pops on him after he caught the ball? These guys over, uh, over on Minnesota's side are not quitting. I guarantee you that. Michigan is now just playing a good football game. Watch Gerald White slip out of the backfield. There he is wide open right on about the 22-yard line. He gets the ball just far enough for the first down, and uh, Michigan will have it first and 10 on the 21-yard line. A little over 10 minutes remaining now in the first half. Harbaugh giving to White. White goes down after a gain of only one yard. Steve Rodas, number 97, got his hands around Gerald White and pulled him down. Now Rodas slipped through there. One thing about this Minnesota club, Ron, we saw them against Michigan State a couple of weeks ago, and to point out how they don't quit, they were down 31-3 in that ball That's game right. and came back and almost won it. 31-26 right. was the final, so they don't give up. Gerald White now with 11 carries, 51 yards. Second down and nine at the 20-yard line. White gets a rest now as Bob Perryman checks in. Perryman and Jamie Morris are the running backs. Lucas comes out wide left. Polisar's wide right. Harbaugh back to throw. Firing up the middle, complete to Morris. And down goes Morris, a jarring tackle at the 16-yard line made by Steve Thompson. Good alert play by Thompson. Coming back, Morris had some room out there. You know, he's like a jitterbug, and he's got that quickness and that great speed. And he almost broke it away, but coming from behind was Thompson tackling for a very short game. It'll be now third down and five yards to go. Well, another big third down play here for Michigan. They've been able to convert on these much of the day. They are in position for a field goal. Polisar is wide left. Lucas is out to the right side. Harbaugh back to throw. Firing for Jokic, and he's got him for a first down at the six-yard line. Dwayne Dutrell over there in the coverage, finally making the tackle. Jokic down the field. All he did was Make a move on Dutrell, and, and he made a, what he made is what we call a sideline pattern, perfectly thrown by Jimmy Harbaugh. And to try to cover this guy, Paul Jokic, who is six foot eight, I keep on saying that, 240 pounds, look at where the ball's thrown, perfectly. How can you stop that? Dutrell, there's no possible way that Dutrell could ever stop that ball. It was perfectly thrown, good pattern by Jokic, and Michigan has a first and goal on the six. Eight and a half minutes remaining, Michigan trying to get on the board for the fourth time in this game. Keeping. Balls ahead to about the five-yard line. A gain of one. It'll be second down and goal. He's a heady ball player. You just see him like most quarterbacks who are running the option out there. They'll try to pick up an extra yard or so. Harbaugh says, uh-uh. Last year I broke my arm doing that. This year I'm going to get down on the ground. I'll take my one yard and we'll go back and run another play. Second down and goal now from the five. A very impressive first half. Being played by the Wolverines. Harbaugh lost it and fell on it. So that'll move it back to about the eight-yard line. And it'll be third and goal. What Harbaugh likes to do down here is roll out. And with the wide side to his right, he certainly would probably have a play call where he can roll out to the right and look downfield to see if he can find his big tight end, Kattis or Paul Jokic, in the end zone because they must go to the end zone. It's third down and eight yards to go for the touchdown. That ball took a very fortunate bounce for Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, sure right did. back to him. The five defensive backs in there now for Minnesota. Third and goal, Harbaugh back to throw. He's got plenty of protection. That's Jamie Morris, and he's in for the score. Jim Harbaugh, a very heady ball player. We said keep an eye on him prior to the game. He was perfect that time, hitting Jamie Morris out in the right flat after he came back to throw. Waited, let, now watch it. He sits back here, and he just waits for the play to develop. It didn't develop where he wanted it to, so he took his second choice, and Jamie Morris was open, and he got into the end zone for six points. Michigan now leads 23 to nothing. Surprise. 
And Mike Gillette will try to make it 24. There's the boot by Gillette. And the Wolverines have opened up a 24-0 lead over the Golden Gophers of Minnesota with 6.59 to go in the first half. We are back at the Metrodome. It's been all Michigan to this point, 24-0. And there it is, number of plays, nine yardage, 33, four minutes and 14 seconds on that last drive. Here's the kickoff. Rick Sutkowitz gets the bare foot into it. And it's taken at the eight-yard line by Terry Stewart. Didn't advance it very far, though. After the reception, he gets it out to about the 12. You know, you can talk about this Michigan defense all day long. They played this year against the great quarterbacks in the Big Ten, Jack Trudeau, Jim Everett, Chuck Long. Not one of those three was able to throw a touchdown pass against this Michigan defense. Look at the great field position Michigan's had uh, here in this first half. On the 45-yard line, Minnesota starting out on the 18-yard line. It's pretty tough to get the ball in for scores if you don't get that field position. And to me, the most incredible thing about the Michigan game against Purdue is the fact that we've seen Purdue. We know how good an offensive ball club <laughs> they have. They were unable to get the ball in the Michigan territory all day. 44-yard line. That's all the farther they got it. And here's That's Minnesota. Amazing. Ricky Foggy trying to get something going here for the Gophers offensively. He'll keep it and try to pull that same play that he pulled on the last possession. This time it was good for only a two-yard gain, Andy Moeller. Making the stop for the Wolverines. Those two middle linebackers really do fill well, Mike Mallory and Andy Moeller. We made mention Mike Mallory is the, the son of uh, Bill Mallory down at Indiana. Uh, he has another young son down at Indiana, by the way, who's going to be a good linebacker. Second down. Seven yards to go for the first down. David Puck was looking for running room and found none. And Ricky Foggy also took a spill after handing it off. Mark Messner took care of Foggy. And Mike Mallory took care of Puck. Well, let me tell you something. Here's where it's won and lost. Look at how quickly Michigan comes off the line of scrimmage, makes penetration into the backfield of Minnesota, and that's why Minnesota can't pick up any yards. Third down and six. The give again is to the fullback puck. He got it out to about the 19-yard line. It's three yards shy of a first down. Mike Mallory and Andy Moeller making the stop, and the Minnesota fans getting a little frustrated now. I think the whole team is becoming a little bit frustrated. This Michigan defense is awesome. They are just so quick, so fast, and they're, they came here ready to play. So Adam Kelly checks in to do the punting. His last punt was partially blocked. Eric Campbell is the deep man for Michigan. He's standing at his own 35-yard line. Kelly gets a good kick away this time. At the 37-yard line, here's Campbell. Campbell out to the 47-yard line. And that's when the Wolverines will put it in play. Not many smiles on the faces of Minnesota fans right now. There's one. It is 24-0 Michigan with 5.18 remaining in the first half. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on Michigan side. Yeah, it looks like quarterback coach uh, Jerry Hanlon uh, up, in the, up in the booth uh, can't even get in touch with his people on the, uh, on the sidelines. But, of course, when you have 24 points, they may not need you to the second half. After a 43-yard kick, a nine-yard return, it's first down Michigan at the 47. Harbaugh stumbles a bit. And that pass is batted down, almost intercepted by Anthony Burke. Burke had a chance to go all the way if he could have found it after getting that hand up. Jimmy Harbaugh had John Colasar open out here on the sideline. Here he goes back to pass. Jimmy Harbaugh, big number 95, puts his big mid up there, Anthony Burke. Knocks it down. Good play by the big uh, defensive end. If Burke had turned the other way, he would have been able to pull that one down. At this There's point, it looks like the jug. jug may just stay right in Michigan's pocket. That's a second down and 10 now. Harbaugh. And no running room this time. For Phil Webb, the tailback. Bruce Holmes and Joe Christofferson saw to that. That's only the second time in this football game that Michigan has started in their own uh, own end of the field. And that's at the 47-yard line. And already we are seeing some substitutions offensively for the Wolverines. Well, now they bring Colasar back in. They bring Jamie Morris back in. I imagine that it's a passing situation. 
It is third down and 12 at the 45-yard line. A little over five minutes to go in first half. Michigan with a comfortable 24-0 lead. Foul ball with a straight drop. Has plenty of time, but can't find an open man. Now he's scrambling. And he now finds Paul Jokic open inside the 40-yard line. He was open in the middle of the zone, and when you give Jimmy Harbaugh that kind of time, he looked down the field and saw, the, who did he see, that big guy, six foot eight, 240 pounds? Paul Jokic right in the middle of the zone. Look at when he moves out here. Nobody's open. Good blocking up front. Harbaugh gets out to his left, and he throws the ball running on his left, and Jokic is open, and it's 19 yards and a first down for the University of Michigan. That's one thing that quiets the crowd down, doesn't it? They're at the Minnesota 36. Great patience shown in that last play by Harbaugh. He gives to the tailback, Jamie Morris. Morris gains about three yards. Peter Nigeria, number 32, making the stop for Minnesota. The only thing is, this Minnesota defense has been on this field a long time this afternoon. And sooner or later, they've continued, they'll break more than they have already, and Michigan leads 24 to nothing. After a two-yard gain, it's second down and eight. We'll take a look at the Minnesota marching band at halftime. We'll also meet the athletic director and former great athlete here at Minnesota, Paul Giel. Our Big Ten Players of the Week will be saluted. A look at the Big Ten standings and some highlights from the first half. A little over four minutes remain in the first half. Harbaugh back to throw on second down. Got all kinds of time, and the pass is caught at the 30-yard line by Jamie Morris. Peter Najarian back in the coverage for Minnesota. John Kolasar and Paul Jokic were running down the field. They were clearing out, and then little Jamie Morris. I don't think they can see him out there. You know, he's only 5'775 pounds. He might not see him out there, but surprisingly enough, Jimmy Harbaugh really finds him very quickly. Found him for a touchdown. Uh, on the last touchdown, that time he found him in the sideline again. It'll be third down and four. The ball right at the 30-yard line. Eric Campbell comes out wide left this time. Jokic goes wide to the right side. And Harbaugh's back to throw. Firing for Jokic, and this one is incomplete. So this time, the Gopher defense doesn't break. Well, the Gophers had the blitz on. It, it, that's the first time Jimmy Harbaugh just didn't have the patience. When Paul Jokic went down and ran the pattern, he was covered very well by Dwayne Dutrell, and it fell incomplete. It'll be a fourth down, and we'll, we're looking for a 47-yard field goal. Mike Gillette connected on one from 28 yards. A little bit earlier, the holder is Monty Robbins. There's the boot by Gillette. And this one's going to be no good. Off to the right. He had the distance, but not the direction. Wind was blowing hard. So Minnesota is able to stop the Michigan ball club this time. And they'll get the ball back with three minutes, seven seconds remaining in the first half. And Michigan with that 24-0 lead. The Gophers in deep trouble now. With no points on the scoreboard, Michigan scoring 24. And when you run the kind of offense they do with the, with the Ricky Foggy, and you don't have that downfield passing you're looking for the big play you're, you, you rely on ball control it makes it very difficult for you to pick up 24 points against a very very good Michigan defense that has given up only five points a game penalty markers are down as the ball was snapped this is the best field position that Minnesota has had here in the first half and they just lost five yards of it so this will move the ball back to the 25-yard line. They look like they're going into a double-wing passing formation with Ricky Foggy. And obviously, they're going to have to come... On the offense, first they're down. Gonna, they're going to have to come out of their game plan of trying to run the ball right straight up the middle and establish, establish the passing game. They have two tight ends in there. Andy Hare is wide right. Anderson wide left. Up the middle goes the fullback, David Puck. He got it back out to the 30-yard line, where it'll be second down and 10, about a five-yard gain. Doug Mallory making the tackle. He is the brother of Mike Mallory. Doug's a junior, Mike's a senior. That's the offensive line sitting on Michigan's bench. They should be praised. They've done a great job offensively. Second down and 10. 
foggy. Pitches it out to Valdez Baylor, but it's incomplete. Michigan's great penetration. Defensively, Mike Mallory in there. Mark Messner, Northwestern, Michigan State, tied in the first period, 7-7. I think that's being played up at uh, up at Michigan State, Ohio State, and Wisconsin. No score. Tennessee seven, Mississippi nothing in the first period. And here at the dome, it's 24 nothing Michigan with two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Third down and ten. Longy back to throw on third and long. He's in trouble. He fires it. It is caught by Baylor. Did he get enough for the first down? He was out of bounds. He was out of bounds. They're saying no catch. Did not have the, what a great play by Ricky Foggy just to get out of this. Great rush on him. Valdez Blader runs a little out pattern, but Foggy's being chased, and he finally gets it out to his halfback, but he caught the ball, and he was out of bounds. And the camera showed very clearly that Baylor came down out of bounds. And I didn't want to say down. that until I really saw him uh, without one foot in. Kelly back to kick again. The rush is on. Kelly gets a pretty good kick away. It's high in the air. Eric Campbell calling for the fair catch. Lost it at the 35-yard line. Minnesota has it. That was a knuckleball. It was not a spiral. Very tough to catch. Fumbled by Michigan. What's the ball? It just it looks like a knuckleball. It's, it's coming down and it, it was hard to judge. And Michigan fumbled and apparently Michigan recovered. Boy, it sure looked like Minnesota got that ball. Maybe they are saying that they did not give him enough room to make oh, the fair catch. That could be. That's what it is. Campbell had to come up for that ball a little bit. And you've got to give a punt returner, a kick returner, a little bit of room to make the fair sure catch do. if he calls for it. And that's what we're going to get here. We're going to get the penalty marked off against Minnesota. Oh, wow. Everything is going wrong for Minnesota today. We'll take a look at this, and we'll see. First, we'll, we'll hear from the referee what exactly Interference goes. with the opportunity to catch the ball. Contact 15 yards against the kicking team. First down. You've got to give that receiver about a three-yard area to make the fair catch. And Minnesota did not do that, so what could have been a big play for the Golden Gophers instead goes Michigan's way. Well, Steve Franklin was down there, number 40, just a little too quickly. Maybe the fans don't like it, but that's what the rules say. The first down at the 49-yard line of the Wolverines. Harbaugh back to throw on first down. He has plenty of protection, and the pass is caught out there by Eric Cannis, the big tight end. First down at the 32-yard line. Bruce Holmes finally brought him down. Cannis from his tight end position running what we call a drag out. And it was a good clear uh, by number 40, John Colasar. And the big Cannis was open on the sideline, just flipped out there by Jimmy Harbaugh. And Michigan picks up another first down. And they are, again, in scoring position. Those receivers for Michigan like a couple of bookends. Paul Jokic, 6'8", Eric Cannis, 6'6". <laughs> That's a big guys. First down to the 32-yard line. A little over two minutes remaining. First half. Michigan trying to add to a 24 nothing lead. Morris gets it inside the 30, a gain of about five. We have less than two minutes here in the first half. Michigan leads 24 to nothing over Minnesota. Steve Rodas making the stop on that last play. That's five carries for 23 yards now. Jamie Morris has only carried the ball five times. He's also caught a couple of passes. One key one, a touchdown. Second down, six after the four-yard gain. Colasar comes out wide left. Harbaugh back to throw. Firing downfield for Jokic, and he's got him for the touchdown. He, he held it long enough. He held it long enough. The crowd didn't think so, but the referee did. Boy, that's a close call. He caught the ball, and when he, what the referee said is when he hits the ground, Steve Franklin was right there, but Jokic was wide open. Watch this. Watch it very closely now. He catches the ball. He brings it in. Yes, it is a touchdown. He, when he hit the ground, he fumbled it. That's the third touchdown pass of the day for Jim 
Harbaugh. All he had to have was possession, and he did, and the ground cannot cause a fumble. Gillette's point after attempt is good, and the Wolverines from Michigan have opened up a 31 to nothing lead over the Golden Gophers. Well, Ron, we've heard a lot about this Michigan club, the great defense they have. We're getting a chance to see them today for the first time, and certainly they're living up to their reputation. They're not a bad offensive team either. Not at all. And as we mentioned, keep an eye on Jimmy Harbaugh. Jimmy Harbaugh has been absolutely fantastic. Watch his great catch by Paul Jokic. He ran an out pattern, out and up. He ran to the sideline, then he went up the field, and Franklin could not keep up with him. There it is. The catch is made. He brings it in. He has control. He hits the ground, and the ball fumble. That is a touchdown. So with a minute 24 remaining, it's now 31-0 Michigan. Wow. Who'd have ever thought this? Everybody looking for a defensive battle here today between two very good defensive teams, but Michigan not allowing that to happen. Well, these offensive linemen, John Elliott, John Vitale, Bobby Tabacino, Clay Miller, Jerry Quirno, these, these five guys are really playing great football in front of Jimmy Harbaugh in that in, in that Michigan offense. Here's the kickoff. Melvin Anderson awaiting the kick from Sutkowitz. And this one will go through the end zone. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. Looking ahead one week, Ron Kramer. Can we do that yet? Michigan, Ohio State. We've had a chance to see them both. Well, that's that is a, a great rivalry, and we're gonna have the Wizard of Oz and the Yellow Brick Road on here at halftime. Alan Holt has checked into the game now at quarterback, replacing Ricky Foggy. Yeah, yeah, the Ohio State Michigan Michigan game. I mean, that's an, an outstanding game. It, that is not a that's not a game. That's a battle. And as we've seen uh, many times uh, on on Turner Network, we've seen uh, uh, Woody Hayes, and he knows the people up north can play football, and we know that Ohio State can too. But I think it's a little too quickly. We have Holt in at quarterback. He's a freshman out of Miami. He's back to throw on first down. And the pass is caught by Craig Otto, the tight end. Another freshman from Elk River, Minnesota. He's got a first down. Well, Alan Holt, a couple weeks ago against Michigan State, got them ignited, was able to throw the ball, and there's 118 left here in the first half, and they see if they can get some points on the scoreboard. He played the entire game against Michigan State. That's when Ricky Foggy was out with a groin pull. Holt rolling right, firing downfield for Gary Couch. He's got him at the 46-yard line, and Couch falls out of bounds. Stopping the clock with a minute eight to go in the first half. Michigan in a prevent defense. They're, they're, they're playing that deep zone. They won't let them get deep. Couch went right down the field, stopped in between it, and he was hit perfectly by Allen Holt. Uh, first down again for, uh, for the Minnesota Gophers. 24-yard gain on that last play, and a timeout's been taken here by Minnesota. Watch the rollout here. He's off to the right. Spots his man open. Gary Couch. Gary Couch makes a great catch down there. 24-yard gain and a first down. Out of bounds. Stops the clock. They didn't even have to call timeout, but they did because I think they want to send in two or three plays. Coming into this game, Gary Couch had only caught 10 passes all season, but he averaged 41 and a half yards <laughs> per catch. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good day. If you catch one or two a day, you're, you're making 80, 80 yards. Young fella having a good time at the go for football the resurgence here at the Humphrey Dome and right now the Golden Gophers just hoping to get something on the board before the first half comes to an end they sure would like to go in on a positive note and I'm sure that's what Lou Holtz is trying to do at this point and that's why he put in Alan Holt a freshman quarterback it's a first down at the 46-yard line of Michigan. Holt is the quarterback. Pudgy Abercrombie and Kevin Wilson, the running backs now. Holt back to throw. He's going to go down. Back at the 47-yard line, he was swarmed under. The blitz was on. Jeff Akers, number 33, the first man to get through. And they'll call a timeout again, stopping the clock with 57 seconds remaining in the first half. The blitz was on. Michigan came with everything. All linebackers. While we have a moment here, let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is WXMI TV 17 Grand Rapids. 
There's the man that got through to bring down the quarterback, Jeff Akers, out of Lynn, Massachusetts. An interesting quote from Bo Schembechler in the newspaper here a couple of days ago talking about his defense. He says, at times, they even scare me. <laughs> well, you know what he has thought, though? He has thought that all year long, something was going to happen sooner or later, and it hasn't. They just keep I mean, getting better week they, after week. I mean, they, they have... They have held the opponents to 51 points while Michigan has scored 240 points. That means you're scoring 26 and a, at 0.6 points per game offensively and defensively. You're holding people to 5.6. People like uh, Iowa, Illinois, Purdue, and now, of course, Minnesota. Well, you know, if you can hold a team to 5.6 points per game, all you got to do is score one touchdown every week and you're a winner. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And Michigan has certainly done more than that here today. They lead it 31-0 with 57 seconds to go in the first half. Allen Holt in at quarterback, replacing Ricky Foggy. He's back to throw on second down. Little quick pass is caught by Roselle Richardson. And Richardson goes out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Richardson is a quarterback who is used at times in that backfield as either a running back or a pass receiver. And caught that pass, got out of bounds uh, very nicely for a seven-yard game. 50 seconds remaining. It's a third and nine at the 45-yard line. Holt dropping straight back to throw. He better be careful. He got away from one man. Now he's going to run the ball. Trying to get out of bounds and stop that clock, and he does at the 39-yard line. And a penalty flag has been thrown over there. After what looked like a little bit of a late hit by Michigan. Jeff Akers over there on the tackle. Well, it looked like to me it was a little bit of a late hit, too. You can't throw those people down when they're out of bounds. So Michigan will be penalized. We've got 40 seconds left here in this, uh, in this uh, second period. And that's the first break, really, that Minnesota's had all day. Well, I'll tell you who doesn't agree with this call at all is Bo Schembechler. He is raging over on the sideline. Well, he's one of those raging bulls anyway, <laughs> as we all know. The ball goes up to the 25. So it's a first down for Minnesota. 40 seconds remaining in the first half. We are having some technical difficulties with the referee's microphone, so we were unable to hear that last call, which was for the late hit. Allen Holt back to throw. Firing downfield. He's got Melvin Anderson at the 10-yard line. It's a first down. 34 seconds remain. Doug Mallory and Brad Cochran were back in the coverage for Michigan. Even though Mike Hammerstein put on an awful lot of pressure, Michigan had a defense back there. It was a zone defense. And a good catch right in the center of it, Mel Anderson, and a good game tackle by the University of Michigan defensive backs. So the Gophers trying to get on the board here. The clock is moving with 30 seconds remaining. They give this to Pudgy Abercrombie, and Abercrombie dives ahead of the eight-yard line. They don't have any timeouts. Yes, they do. They have one left, and they're going to take it right here. Minnesota took the timeout. They tried to cross up, but there's a flag on the field. And it might be against Minnesota. The flag is back near the goal line. That is their last time out for Minnesota. No, that's against, against Michigan. Michigan. So it will be halfway to the goal line. And 21 seconds left. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you take a look at it, you can throw at least two passes and kick a field goal. Bo Schembechler, you know, here he comes out on the field. He wants to play that defense a little bit, I think. Second he's explanation a fiery guy, he's heard I'll from the referee in the last minute that he hasn't agreed with. And he's done a great job for the University of Michigan over the past 17 years. He's won over 80% of his football games, and that makes him one of the greatest coaches in the history of the University of Michigan and in the country, really. The personal foul call against the Wolverines moves the ball down to the four-yard line. It's second down. 21 seconds remaining. The clock now begins to move. Allen Holden, quarterback. Holt rolling left. Heading toward the end zone, and he's stopped just shy of the end zone at about the one-yard line. Mike Mallory making the 
tackle. They're going to try to hurry up now and get a playoff. But I'll tell you what I think. I think he got enough for the first down, and that'll stop the clock just so they can move the chains. Only two seconds remain now in this first half. I don't know how they can call timeout. I think they're all out of timeouts. Well, I thought they were, too. But the referee's indication was that a timeout was taken here by Minnesota. The scoreboard clock showing no timeouts left for the Golden Gophers. But they apparently did have one left. That's how much we know up here, and that's how much the scoreboard clock knows. All we can do is look at the scoreboard clock, and uh, apparently one of the timeouts one of were them must not have used, been obviously. I think Lou Holtz wants to get him in a positive mood right now, get something on the scoreboard. I don't know if he's going to kick a field goal. If I were him, I'd kick a field goal right now. Well, oddly enough, this is the, on the, scoreboard. the same stage of the game where Minnesota began, began to come to life against Michigan State. Absolutely. 31-3 at halftime, and they came back in the second half to make it a ball game, 31-26. Here they trail 31-0. The only, the only way you can the only way you can get your players really in a, a spark is to get some kind of points on the scoreboard even though Michigan has 31 points if they go in 31 to 3 and it, it, it'll be it'll be a spark for them because they did get some points on the scoreboard against this tough Michigan defense well the ball is resting on the one yard line they'll have time to run one play before the first half ends The running backs are Kevin Wilson and Valdez Baylor. You know, if you don't get this in now, if Minnesota doesn't get this in for a touchdown, they go, in the, they go into the locker room with a real bummer because now all of a sudden Michigan's defense is held with no points. And here comes the play. Allen Holt, the quarterback. Throwing, it is caught by Gary Cox. There are penalty markers down all over the place. So hold everything. Penalty markers down. No more time on the scoreboard. People were humping and jumping on that line of scrimmage. We don't know who it's going to be against. We might have two separate penalties here. One penalty flag was thrown in the end zone at about the time that Gary Couch caught the ball. The other one thrown back at about the four-yard line. But then, of course, if, if Minnesota was offside and one of their linemen lifted up their hand that means it was a, it was before the play so the, the other ones won't count we can see people jumping up and down we saw those flags go out very early was in an incomplete pass he thought he caught it it was a the penalty was against michigan and so this play will be run over again they'll move the ball to about a half yard away. Might be a first down. <laughs> and we'll have that final play of the first half one more time. Of course, it doesn't make any difference whether it's a first down or not. There's nothing, there isn't any more uh, time on the scoreboard, so this will be the last play of the first half. The ball just inches away. It we have some difficulties call against Michigan. We have some difficulties also with the with the microphone on referee on the referee, so we can't hear what the calls are. Alan Holt asking for quiet now. And now timeout's been taken by Michigan. As they want Minnesota to think it over, think it over a little bit. <laughs> Not a bad ploy right there. You already know you're up against one of the tough defenses in the nation, one of the toughest defenses in the nation. Yeah, they were ready to they were ready to call their play and they were ready to get it going. But Michigan's defense now, they may be thinking exactly, uh, okay, let's find out uh, what what our plan was to stop Minnesota if they were close to the goal line. And so they called the timeout, wanted to talk it over. The Michigan defense has allowed only two touchdowns all year. Wisconsin no. scored one. And Indiana scored one. That's been it. And no extra points. And the odd thing about that is one of the touchdowns that Indiana scored, Michigan fumbled on the one and a half yard line, and Indiana got in with that. And it took them three downs. Well, here they come again. The Golden Gophers trying to become the third team to score six against Michigan. And Wilson and Valdez Baylor are the running backs in there. Allen Holt, the quarterback. 
This again will be the final play of the first half after that pass interference call against Michigan. The Michigan defenders now trying to intimidate. That's how they jumped offside before. They, they're trying to intimidate that offensive line, maybe make them jump offside. And if that happens, then they can refuse the penalty. Here we go. Pouch is in motion. Penalty markers are down again. In for the touchdown is Valdez Baylor. But they're going to call a penalty, I think, against Minnesota, but it will be before the play got started. It will be on the left tackle, and they'll have another play. It is against the Gophers. We're going to be down here forever, aren't we? Cost him a touchdown, that penalty. Well, not only left tackle the left tackle of minnesota offside watch him over on the left side see him right there left guard he was before the ball was snapped he was he was making his block so now the ball comes back to the five yard line and once again we will say here comes the final play of the first half we, we hope so that now i think i could sit here and if i were lou holtz with five yards to go why not take the three points in it's a little confusing right now. Let's take the three points and see if we can get four touchdowns the next half. Well, he may have had that in mind, but they're going to go for the touchdown. As the ball is on the five-yard line. Polk back to throw. He's going to try to run it in, and down he goes, and that Michigan defense does it again. A big goose egg. Number 33, Jeff Akers, making the tackle on Allen Holt to bring this first half to an end. Watch how they're walking off the field now. Great rush by Michigan, great defensive coverage in the backfield. There's the tackle right there by number 33, Jeff Akers. He did not get in, and when I saw this Minnesota team going off the field, they are in a dejected mood right now. They are not on a high, they're on a low. Well, they marched the ball all the way down the field, only to come up empty. And at the end of the first half of play here at the Metrodome, it's still 31-0 Wolverines. Colasar awaiting the kick. They try the onside kick. A little trickery employed by Minnesota, but it didn't work. As Michigan is going to get the ball in excellent field position. Not a bad idea. But Keith Cowan, number 58, was right on top of it. The only problem with the idea is it didn't work. It was a great idea, and it's always a great idea if they do work, but if it doesn't work, it puts Michigan into great field position, and if Michigan can get more points on the scoreboard, I mean, it could be Katie Bardador for Minnesota Gophers. So Michigan gets the ball right at the 50-yard line. <laughs> but as you know, if you were in that position, you're 31 to nothing behind. you got to try just about anything to get on the scoreboard. Come out, Jim Harbaugh, quarterback. Jamie Morris and Gerald White, the running backs. Eric Harris in motion. The game to the fullback, Gerald White. He got about two yards, and that's it. Peter Najarian in on the tackle for Minnesota, along with Matt Martinez and Bruce Holmes. Oh, Peter Najarian, he just loves to play football. He's out there to hit. Boy, there he is. He's stuck again. They're stuck together again. That's how hard they hit. They, their helmets are stuck together trying to pry them loose. There it is. They were, they, uh, can you believe that? Bruce Holmes and Gerald White were stuck together. You think there ain't some hitting going on there? You're, watch it. Watch this on the replay now. Watch these two guys whack into each other. Wow! And the helmets. <laughs> they couldn't get them apart. Got intertwined. <laughs> the feeling that some of these Minnesota players kind of feel like they've had Michigan people on top of them the whole ball game. Second down eight after a two-yard game by White. Our ball back to throw on second down. Has all kinds of time back there. Can't find an open receiver. Now he does. Firing long downfield. Complete to Eric Caddis. The tight end from Cincinnati. Matt Martinez back in the coverage, and the Wolverines are inside the 10-yard line. Another first down. Watch Caddis come from the left side here, and Harbaugh caught in the back. Sees nobody's open. He just whips over here to the right. All of a sudden, he sees Eric Caddis break open. Eric's wide open, and then he makes a good catch, and it's a first down, and goal to goal on the eighth for the Michigan Wolverines. That's a 40-yard gain. 
That's his third kick for 65 yards. And Harbaugh is now over 200 yards in the passing department. He's 12 out of 15. A little wind knocked out of him on the sideline there. First down at the eight-yard line. Perryman, the ball carrier, picked up about a yard. Anthony Burke making the stop for Minnesota. They'll mark that ball at the six-yard line. Big number 95, uh, Anthony Burke. Looks like he pinched his shoulder. Eric Caddis. Eric Caddis is back in. So now they've spotted the ball just shy of the seven-yard line. So looks second like, down and goal. Looks like Michigan's going to have to go up top. Our boss had a fine day. He is back to throw on second down. The pass is dropped by Perryman inside the five-yard line. Peter Najarian back in the coverage. Be third and goal. A very impressive performance today by the Wolverines. More so in the air than on the ground. And we mentioned this little guy, Jim Harbaugh, sneaked up. Well, he's not really a little guy. He's six foot three, two hundred pounds. I mean, he's a pretty big kid. But I, you never heard anything about him all year, and we haven't seen him. So obviously, we didn't know a great deal about Jim Harbaugh. But boy, he is very impressive today. He has had an excellent day running the offense. And he's cool back there. Third and goal for the eight-yard line. Our ball with a straight drop. Can't find an open man. Now he finds an open man, but fires it incomplete. John Colasar, the intended receiver in the end zone. But the incompletion will make it fourth down and bring on the field goal unit. Oh, good defensive play by Matt Martinez. Matt's in the end zone over there, and he's sort of... Hangs on to John Colasar. There he's done. Knocked John Colasar down. And then he tried to. Then, he, then here's the play right here where Jim Harbaugh tries to throw it to him and is not able to do it. It'll be fourth down, the field goal try. Mike Gillette will be booting this one from the 15 yard line, a 25 yard attempt. He connected from 28 yards, missed from 47 earlier. And this one is good from 25 yards away. So just two minutes into the third quarter, the Wolverines have added some more points to their lead. It's now 34-0 Michigan. Pete Van Wern, Ron Kramer back with you from the Metrodome in Minneapolis where it's 34-0 Michigan. We, uh, first quarter score, Wisconsin 3, Ohio State nothing. That'll make some Michigan fans happy. Out of the wishbone now. Ricky Party back to throw. Long downfield for Anderson, incomplete off the fingertips of Melvin Anderson. Well, he went back to the wishbone. Anderson was wide open, ran it down and in, down the field. Ricky Foggy, that, that was a good throw. That was a perfectly thrown ball out of the wishbone. Watch him. He just sets back there, and he wings it. And Mel Anderson is wide open. That ball should have been caught. Tony Gant and Ivan Hicks were back on the coverage for the Wolverines. So the incompletion makes it third and seven. That would have certainly encouraged this Minnesota offensive team. There's that score. That's the score. Michigan State's leading Northwestern at the halftime, uh, 13 to nothing. A third down play for Ricky Foggy. Back to throw. The pass is incomplete. The intended receiver, number six, Eugene Gaylord, called Rocky by his friends here at Minnesota. The Gophers will have to punt the ball away. Andy Moeller moved in front, tipped the ball. Now they're going to have to punt it again. Michigan will have another chance. I think Michigan's only punted one time in this football game. They have played a near-perfect football game. No, perfect as far as nobody getting the ball into the end zone. <laughs> Whew, good kick. John Colasar waiting for it at the nine-yard line. Called for the fair catch there, and that's where Michigan will put the ball in play. That was a good kick by Adam Kelly. 48 yards. And no return. So now the Wolverines have it again. But they're deep in their own territory. Michigan coaches still working very hard. 
the coaches never think that these games are over and that's why I always keep watching too I like to see these youngsters play in football games even even if Michigan now leads 34 to nothing there's still some good football going on out there yeah that was Our Gary Bowler on the sideline lining up is running back to Jamie Morris and Gerald White Morris the ball carrier the 15 yard line got to about the 18. Matt Martinez and Donovan Small making the stop for Minnesota. Bo will probably try to keep the ball on the ground, keep that clock moving. Jamie Morris a bit injured, so he's going to come off and they're going to bring in Big Perman. So Morris off the field, Bob Perryman, the junior from Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. Buzzards Bay, I'll tell you what, you got to be tough to do anything up there. <laughs> Seven carries for 23 yards now for Jamie Morris, who just checked out of the game. Second down and two. Perryman stopped shy of the first down, about a yard shy. Doug Mueller, number 46, making the stop for Minnesota. Just straight ahead stuff. Fullback carrying the ball. Michigan now third down and one yard to go. They're going to try to use the clock, as I mentioned before. 10:41 here in the third period. Michigan leads 34 to nothing. Third down. Actually, less than a yard to go for the first down. Two tight ends in there now for Michigan. And Harbaugh giving the white. He's got the first down all the way out to the 26-yard line. And then some. This Michigan offense. We talked about the defense being awesome. Today, Michigan's offense and defense both playing a fantastic game. Headed by Jimmy Harbaugh, quarterback. Well, Harbaugh's having a great day throwing the ball, but if you talk to Bo Schembechler, he is a disciple of the running game. He says if you can run the football offensively and stop the run defensively, you're going to win a lot of football games. And Bo Sounds sort of simple, doesn't it? <laughs> Sounds a lot easier than it is. Morris back in there. Stopped for a loss of a yard by Anthony Burke. Back at the 25-yard line. Burke did a good fill, was not blocked. By big John Elliott, he slipped through the line and the tackle for a one-yard loss was Jamie Morse. So it'll be second down, 11. Watch him slip from the left side here. You see him slip through here? There he is, pushes the guard out of the way. Makes the tackle just the way it should be done. Minnesota, by the way, playing defensively today without one of their top players, Mark Dosbovic. He's on his sprained knee. He's a good one. Yes, he was. So Joe Christofferson playing in that spot today. Second down, 11. Harbaugh can't find an open man. Still scrambling around back there. Heads to the far side of the field. Now he's found somebody open. Firing downfield. It is complete to Paul Jokic. First down, Michigan inside the Minnesota 40. Wow. What a play by Jimmy Harbaugh. All of his people downfield were covered. He just kept moving to the left, moved around to the right. His offensive line, Elliot Vitelli, Tabuccino, Miller, and uh, Quirna, they all blocked for him. He moved all the way out to the right side. All of a sudden saw Paul Jokic down the field. Watch this throw now. It's perfectly thrown and a good catch by Paul Jokic. On the run, there he is. Look at this catch. That's a big basketball player. You know, he used to be play, played basketball at Michigan up until last year when he came out for football, and Bo asked him to come. He said, I certainly will, and he's been a great addition. Five catches, 119 yards. And two touchdowns. Gerald White gets the ball inside the 35-yard line. A five-yard pickup will make it second down and five. Bruce Holmes making the stop for Minnesota. <laughs> Looks like the trophy's going back to Michigan. They already got it packed up. The little brown jug is inside that case. And it's protected well. I'll tell you something. You, you just don't fool around with the little brown jug. If you go over to that sideline, you just can't get it back. You might have some ghost water in it. <laughs> 64 yards now for Gerald White. After that last game, which officially is called a four-yard game, so it's second down and six. White again, right up the middle, runs the ball all the way inside the 20-yard line for another first down for the Wolverines. Donovan Small finally made the stop for Minnesota. Devastating. Offensive line just doing a great job. As we mentioned, they're big. They average about 275 up front. 15 carries for White, 80 yards. Pretty good day from that fullback position. First down at the 18. 
Michigan leading it 34 nothing, trying to get some more points on the board here. A little over eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Perryman up the middle. Stop just shy of the 10-yard line. Michigan just every time they run the ball or pass the ball now, just ripping big chunks into that Minnesota defense. Perryman now with five carries for 20 yards. As I was going to mention, the young cheerleaders trying to get this thing going, but it's pretty tough when you're 34 to nothing behind. And Michigan moving again offensively, second down, three yards. The ball on the 11-yard line of Minnesota. to White. White gets inside the 10, close to the first down. Doug Mueller making the stop for the Gophers. You see what I was saying about extra effort? Even White, with the score the way it is, is really working hard because, you know, if you don't, you're going to get hurt. Michigan cheerleaders. These guys are all um, part of the gymnastics team at uh, the University of Michigan. Third down, about a yard to go for the first down. The ball on the nine-yard line of Minnesota. to White. He's got the first down inside the five-yard line. We got a first and goal on the four. Steve Gibbons making the stop for Minnesota. You're watching a great football team. I can't understand how there's that they've lost one game and tied one at this point. Of course, Iowa's not a bad football team either, are they? And neither is Illinois. <laughs> and we'll see that Iowa club next week. That's right. Against this Minnesota ball club, that game will be at Iowa. Michigan, of course, has their annual date with Ohio State one week from now. First and goal from the four-yard line. Gerald White couldn't find a hole that time. Stopped for a one-yard loss back at the five. Tackle made by Steve Thompson. 18 carries, 88 yards. We still have uh, almost a quarter and a half. We have six minutes left here in the third period. Michigan leading 34 to nothing. Just total domination by this Michigan football club. Something we really didn't think would happen at the beginning of this game. Minnesota really has been coming on. And, and, and up to this time, and we just thought that Minnesota would play right down to the wire with Michigan. Second down and goal. Up the five yard line. Gerald Wright is in for the touchdown. So the Wolverines continue to roll it up. Great block up front by Eric Caddis, the tight end. The second touchdown of the day scored by Gerald White. He's also up to 93 yards and 19 carries. You know, one thing when you're traveling, too, you know, you just... You don't have as many players. You can only put in so many players. Your traveling squad is much smaller than the squad you would have at a home game. Mike Gillette will attempt the extra point. Monty Robbins doing the holding. There's Gillette's boot. It's good. And the Wolverines of Michigan continue to play very impressive football. With 5.44 to go in the third quarter, it is 41-0 Michigan. You know, when I started dipping Kodiak, made my friend here real happy because it's his brand. Now it's my brand, too. It's good and moist with a special cut that packs right, and it's got a big, fresh, wintergreen flavor. But <laughs> don't take my word for it. Just ask my friend here. <laughs> he really got away with words, don't he? <laughs> The lengths people go to to listen to a Delco music system may strike you as a bit odd until you've heard it. Nothing else sounds quite like Delco because it's specifically designed to match the acoustics of your very own GM car while it's still on the drawing board. Delco Electronics delivers sound so true you'll never want to stop listening. Delco designed in sound. You'll love it too much to leave it. Michigan leading 34 to nothing, 548, the last one 90 yards. 
Five yard touchdown run by White. Here's the kickoff, and it looks like it's going to stay in the end zone. Terry Stewart electing not to run the ball out, so it'll come out to the 20 yard line. And let's see what unit Lou Holtz will send out there now. He's got Ricky Foggy still in the quarterback, Roselle Richardson is in one of the running back spots along with Valdez Taylor. Trying to get people up. It's very difficult at this time, though, when the score is 41 to nothing. Foggy back to throw on first down. Fires it to Valdez Taylor. And Baylor is out across the 30 yard line. Todd Schulte, number 41, making the stop for Michigan. Screen pass left. One man screen out there to Valdez Baylor. Nine and a half yard pickup. Andy Hare and Gary Couch continue to shuttle in and out of the lineup, bringing the plays in from the sideline. But Couch is in there now. Good block up front on that last play, too, by number 65, Dan Rickton. Just shy of the first down, they mark the ball. It's second down, less than a yard to go. Roselle Richardson got it out across the 30-yard line. Well, that was a fake to Richardson. Ricky Foggy had the ball. <laughs> I think they faked everybody out. I think the, the officials were faked out as well on that play. They blew the whistle when Richardson got stopped. Uh, <laughs> oh, I've never that seen that happen before. Now I told you he could fake, didn't I? I have never seen that happen. Did I tell you he could fake? They'll mark the ball at the 33-yard line. It'll be a first down. Watch this fake to the fullback. Unbelievable. Takes it back out of the stud. There he is out there. And the whistle's blown. The whistle and he has blown. the ball. The whistle was blown when <laughs> Roselle Richardson was hit at the line of scrimmage. And Ricky Foggy still had it. So it's a first down for Minnesota at the 33-yard line. Well, you can't do much about it. You blow it, you blow it. Get on with the next play. They gave the first down. This time, Ricky Foggy is snowed under back at the 28-yard line. That time, he should have given it to Roselle Richardson. So it'll now be second down, about 14. David Polkertsma got through to get credit for that quarterback sack. We got 64,129, a full house here today. To see this game that Michigan totally dominating, Minnesota leading 41 to nothing with 426 left here in the third period. Foggy back to throw on second down and 14. Under some pressure. Now fires it downfield for Gary Couch, but it's incomplete. And it'll come back to the 30-yard line. A run for life. Ricky Foggy pressed pretty hard by that Michigan defense. The defensive unit of Michigan, among the best in the nation, and we certainly have seen why today. Now watch the blitz coming in there. Michigan blitzed. Todd Schulte chasing. Mark Messner chasing. Ricky the, Foggy getting rid of it in, down the field. Incompletion makes third down and 14. Anderson comes out wide right. Andy Hare is also out here on the right side. From the eye formation, Foggy back to throw on third and long. Down toward Andy Hare, who tried to stay in bounds and make the catch, but couldn't reach it. And the incompletion will make it fourth down. At deep Coming again, uh, it was Jeff Akers and Todd Schulte, linebackers, who, who blitzed on that last play, coming after uh, Ricky Foggy, chasing him out of the pocket. And the pass went incomplete down the field. Ricky Foggy has not had a good day throwing the ball, but he's had some little time back there to throw. Giovanni Johnson back there waiting the kick from Adam Kelly. And the Wolverines are going to get the ball back in decent field position again. Kelly just did get this one off. A good, high, long kick. Johnson back at the 16-yard line. Up across the 30. Still on his uh -oh. feet. Uh -oh. The 40. There he goes. He oh. is over. Another Michigan touchdown. Giovanni Johnson with a punt return all the way from the 17-yard line. 85 yards. Saw a hole up the middle. Then all he had 
had to do was outrun Kelly. So the route continues here in Minneapolis. Starts up the middle. Season opening to the outside. There he goes. Katie by the door. There's nothing there but the goal line. And the extra point attempt here is going to be tried by Doug Mallory. Getting a chance to see if he can get an extra point. Gillette's done all the kicking today, but now Mallory does the booting on this one, and it's good. So three minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It is now Michigan 48, Minnesota nothing. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Five yards. He sees a little all of a sudden he breaks to the left and he's gone to the races. There's nobody out there. Kelly's there trying to catch it, but you know Kelly, who's a punter, is not going to catch the wide receiver. Giovanni Johnson, touchdown, Michigan lead 48 to nothing. We still got 349 left here in the third period. And let's make a correction on the extra point. That was Pat Moons who booted that extra point for well, Michigan. They sometimes give us double numbers here, and, and uh, this time we thought it was Mallory, but it was not. It was Moons. Here's the kickoff. And it'll go through the end zone. It's close to the yard line. There's Giovanni. Happy young man. What a great feeling that is. That's, a, that's an experience that many great backs have never had, to be able to run a kick all the way back. He sent that one all the way back to Ann Arbor. they got to be a happy bunch of young men playing the way they are against Minnesota. Of course, next week is going to be the big one against Ohio State. We're going to have a big one, too, because this Minnesota team is going to have to go to Iowa, and I'm sure they're not going to play in the same manner that they're playing today. It has just been one of those days for the Golden Gophers. They've been unable to get anything going. The water was too deep. Ricky Foggy back to throw on first down. It is dropped by Gary Couch at the 40-yard line. He had it and dropped it. Now that's the second one. Earlier, Mel Anderson dropped the touchdown pass. Ivan Hicks was back on the coverage for Michigan. All day long, even when the passes are good and he's not rushed, Look at Gary Couch. This is right in his hands. He's got to make these kinds of catches. Whoops. Where's the ball? Lou oh. Hoss not doing much walking around today. He's a little bit disappointed. It's a long day. He'll get ready for next week, though. Lou Hoss will never quit. Second down and 10. Foggy. Going to keep it this time. He's got the first down all the way out to the 31 yard line. Quarterback draw. Up the middle, got some scores. Michigan State, 13, Northwestern nothing. Ohio State, 7, Wisconsin, 6. A little bit of a struggle for Ohio State in the second. Nebraska, 3, Kansas, 3 in the first. Air Force, 14, Brigham Young, nothing. That's sort of a surprise, too. Air Force could be undefeated this year, and maybe ranked number one. First down at the 31-yard line. Foggy. Back at the 28, a three-yard loss. Todd Schulte got in there to bring him down. Boy, Schulte's doing a good job. There's a the little brown jug. They're getting it ready to go back to Ann Arbor, I think. There's no doubt about where it's going this year. It is 48-0 Michigan with just under three minutes to go in the third quarter. And there's a young man looking on there that maybe someday he'll be playing for it himself. Wouldn't that be great? It's down and 13. Foggy back to throw. The pass is incomplete. Andy Hare, the intended receiver. But once again, Foggy had no time at all back there to get rid of it. You can see the scores on the left side of the Michigan scores. You can see how they've dominated possession of the little brown jug in recent years. Put it again away for another year. Minnesota will have to come to Ann Arbor to get that one back. It's locked. Look at the keys. <laughs> Under lock and key. You can't open it anymore. Third down, 13. T39 to go, third quarter. Foggy back to throw on third down. This pass is dropped again by Anderson. 
that's been happening all afternoon to the Gophers. Tom Schulte was back in the coverage. So Adam Kelly checks in, and here comes Giovanni Johnson back on the field. Even it didn't, even if it didn't happen, things were happening from Michigan side so strongly that even if they would get on the scoreboard, the score is now 48 for Michigan, nothing for Minnesota. And they're gonna get the ball up again. This defense hasn't quit for Michigan yet. They, I don't know if they have a first down here in the second half. Oh, yes, they're two of them. I'm sorry. Adam Kelly back to do the kicking. The boot coming toward the near sideline. Johnson has it at the 31-yard line. And this time he'll be brought right down at the 35. So a four-yard return. Nothing like the 85-yarder the last time, was it? Scott Goulden made the tackle for Minnesota. The guy's sound asleep. A 42-yard kick for Adam Kelly. And a four-yard return. Michigan takes over again. Two minutes, 24 seconds remain in the third quarter. Wolverines have completely dominated this game. Chris Zerbrug is now checked in at quarterback, the junior from Alliance, Ohio. Zerbrug got a lot of play last year after Jimmy Harbaugh got hurt. So Zerbrug really has some experience. So it's the new quarterback, Chris Zerbrug. As Jim Harbaugh gets the rest of the afternoon off. to about the 38-yard line goes Webb. A gain of two. A lot of substitutions being made now by Michigan. And the unhappy looks on the Minnesota sideline, you can certainly understand it. That's Gary Couch. He dropped that little pass a little while ago. Second down That's eight. the reason, 48 to nothing. Zerbrug gives to Perryman, and Perryman will get it out to about the 40-yard line, another two-yard gain. Bruce Holmes, Matt Martinez making the stop for the Gophers. I was going to say there's a lot of clean jerseys in here, but when you're playing indoors and you're not playing on the dirt, there aren't, everything looks like. <laughs> i tell you what, if we were playing outdoors today, they wouldn't be clean. Two inches of snow up here in Minneapolis, and still coming. Third down and six. There might be six inches out there now. Yep. Well, I'm flying down to Florida, so. Here's the third down play. Zerbrug back to throw for the first time under some pressure, firing up field, and he's got a completion to Ken Higgins, the junior from Battle Creek, Michigan. And where Minnesota has been unable to connect on that particular kind of play all day, Michigan has seemingly done it whenever they've needed to. Well, that's just because the quarterbacks have just been very, very patient. And look, at he gets away from that tackle right there, as Zerbrook does, then he goes downfield to Ken Higgins right in the middle of the zone. So that's a first down at the 45-yard line. I'm going to Florida, so I don't care if it snows here. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we have not informed our viewers yet, Mr. Kramer, that a couple of days ago, you became a grandfather. We want to congratulate you. Well, there's a football game going on, but a happy grandfather, I guarantee you. Heidi Ruth Culler, nine pounds, six ounces. My daughter, Cassandra, down in Florida. Come on, Donovan, what a hit, Donovan, that a boy. And her husband, Brian, made the old guy pretty happy. They can call you Gramps now. Yeah. Second down and six at the 41-yard line. There's Gramps right there. Hi, Mom. <laughs> I know my mother's watching. I got to say hi to Gra great grandma, too, eh? Second down, six yards to go at the 41-yard line. 48-0 Michigan, only five seconds remaining in the third quarter, and they're going to let the clock expire here. So quarter number three comes to an end. It's been all Michigan, 48-0. The Wolverines lead the Gophers. We'll be right back. One more quarter of football to go here in Minneapolis. It's been all Michigan, 48-0. Fourth quarter about to begin. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday. You know how we like to feature some of the stars of the past from the schools that we happen to be featuring every week. And if we got one for you this week, check oh. out the guy on the right oh. side of the picture. Oh, wow. That was my old pal Tom Metz, man. <laughs> 
He and I were friends and still are very good friends in Detroit. There's Oak Cranes without his face mask. Watch this great block. How do you like that? It'll bounce up in the air and Oak Kramer catches the ball. You know how many years ago that was? About 31 years ago. 1954. Ron Kramer, All-American. Second wow. down. Six yards to go for the first down. Zerbrug is the quarterback. Hello. How are you, ladies? Perryman and Webb are the running backs. Giovanni Johnson also in that backfield now. Zerbrug keeping, rolling left. Now comes back the other way, and down he goes for no gain. Peter Najarian has him quit. He made the tackle for Minnesota, along with Steve Thompson. Minus six yards defensively, uh, Minnesota finally made one of the big plays. And what they did is they strung Zerbrug up, and he couldn't find a hole and he couldn't pitch it back. It was covered well. Good tackle by Nigerian. They cannot quit. They, you got to learn something even though you're behind 48 to nothing. You must continue to, to work as hard as you can. And Ron, you were right on the money when you were talking about Michigan's third quarter performance this year by outscoring Minnesota 17-0 in the third quarter today. They have now outscored their opponents 69-6. to What's the third quarter play this season? It's third down 11 down to about the 41-yard line is Phil Webb, number 46. Larry Joyner made the tackle for Minnesota. This is a rare occurrence, a punting situation. Illinois leading Indiana 14 to 10 in, in, the, uh, in the second quarter. Michigan State uh, 19 to nothing over Northwestern in the fourth. Michigan State really coming on. They really they are. Really, I mean, after, of course, they started out their season. They had to play Iowa, Michigan, and Illinois. That's pretty tough. That's a pretty tough league. And they're a very young team. They have a lot of juniors and sophomores. And, and Dave Urena, Urema came back, too. That was a big difference. Monty Robbins on the punt for the first time today for Michigan. And that punt is going to sail all the way down to the one-yard line. How about that? Wow. How about that? Not only is the score 48 to nothing, now he puts him in a hole on the one-yard line, just stopped the ball like hitting a chip shot. He hit it, it had backup spin on it. Well, the route continues here at the Metrodome with 13 minutes, 17 seconds remaining. The Golden Gophers really have their backs to the wall here at the one-yard line. Total offense, Minnesota 189, Michigan 398. Allen Hold in there now at quarterback. Roselle Richardson, Kentucky Abercrombie are the running backs. That's Abercrombie. He's a freshman from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. 5'8", 180 pounds. Courtney Holmes also in the lineup. Great effort by field. Tim Schulte out there pumping him out of bounds. Uh, the outside linebacker from the University of Michigan he was down on the ground and kept crawling and finally pumped him out of bounds. He gained a couple of yards, so it'll be second down and eight. What else could happen to this Minnesota team? Allen Holt back to throw. He's under some severe pressure in that backfield, and his pass intended for Roselle Richardson falls incomplete. That was David Fulkertsma, who's already been given credit for one quarterback sack today, and he almost got him another one. I thought he was going to throw him up on the stands. That's what it looked like to me. He got him all the way almost up, right up to the wall. So now it is third down and eight. That's a lot of pressure on a freshman quarterback, too, like Alan Holt. But he got rid of it. It's now going to be third down. About eight. I think you just said that, didn't you? 48 nothing. Michigan dominating this thing from the very outset. And they have done a little bit of everything. Recovered fumbles, intercepted passes. They've thrown for touchdowns, run for touchdowns, returned kicks for touchdowns. And they have stopped Minnesota cold. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I was wondering if you were going to mention that. Roselle Richardson gained maybe a yard there, and that's all. So Watch it deep at that. These are all substitutes, but they're still in there hitting hard, and they're still making good penetration into that Minnesota offensive line. And no game. Kelly will be kicking from the very back of the end zone. Giovanni Johnson waiting. The Minnesota 47. He's already returned one punt, 85 yards for a touchdown. <laughs> Kelly's kick taken by Johnson at the 44-yard line. And he'll get to about the 37-yard line. That's where the Wolverines will put it in play. Excellent field position once again. 
40 yard kick seven yard return Michigan as you mentioned good field position this telecast authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Big Ten Conference and the Turner Broadcasting System Incorporated any publication rebroadcast retransmission or other use of the pictures descriptions or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference and the Turner Broadcasting System is prohibited. Zerb Brug is the quarterback. First down, Michigan. At the Minnesota 37. Webb, the ball carrier, fights his way down to the 32 yard line before he's stopped. Michigan running the ball as much as possible. Keep that clock moving. 12 minutes left here in the fourth period. Terry Harrisack made the stop for Minnesota. Doesn't look like much of a chance for Minnesota to do anything, especially to come back. This, this ball game, I think we can smoke cigars with a score 48 to nothing, and Michigan is only allowed six points in the fourth period against all opponents. Second down five after that five-yard gain by Webb. Zerbrug keeping this one. Gets inside the 30. And is out of bounds at the 26-yard line. There is a penalty marker down at about the 29. Or oh, probably be a holding or something of that nature against the University of Michigan. But Zerbrug found a, found a little room. Got it up for the first down, but I think there's going to be a penalty against Michigan. So the clock stops with 11.40 remaining. We've got a hold on the offense. Yep. That's one of the few penalties in this football game. We haven't had very many. So this one will be stepped off. You can rave all you want about the Michigan defense, but this Michigan offense. We have a hold very on the game. offense. Second down. Against a good defensive team. Minnesota's defensive football team is a good football team. Well, they, they only, they, they had prior to this game 16.4 points scored against them per game. That's not a bad, that's not a bad football team. Not bad at all. Second down and 13. Perryman, the ball carrier, and inside the 40 to about the 36-yard line. Bruce Holmes tripped him up. So the Rose Bowl hopes of Michigan continue. They'll be taking on Ohio State next week while we are in Iowa for the Iowa-Minnesota game. And it looks like it'll be one of those three, either Iowa, Michigan, or Ohio State it's going to Pasadena. It's coming right down to the wire. Third down. Nine yards to go for the first down. Zerbrug back to throw. Has plenty of time. His pass is incomplete. A one-hopper to the intended receiver, Ken Higgins. Donovan Small back in the coverage for the Gophers. Michigan, of course, will punt again. And Monty Robbins checks back in. He's been a pretty decent kicker this year. He's had 39.5, but very little return. And of course, you saw, saw him on that last play when he hit that little chip shot that stopped on the one yard line. If he could do that again, that's just what they're looking for. And now Michigan is going to stop the clock and take a timeout here. Only 10 men on the field. Didn't have enough players on the field. When you get ahead, you can get confused, too. And Michigan certainly is ahead in this football game, 48 to nothing against Minnesota. So the timeout had to be taken by Michigan. There's the look-alike. I don't know if they really want to look like Lou Holtz today, do you? Well, you certainly cannot put down the job Lou Holtz has done here. I know Minnesota fans have to be very disappointed today. They were looking for a very close game, at least. And that hasn't happened. I got some scores. Michigan State 19 to nothing over Northwestern. Wisconsin 12, Ohio State 7 in the third quarter. Iowa and Purdue are tied in the second quarter. 7-7 seven, seven the score in that game. There's the punt by Robbins, and this one will not stop for him. Bouncing into the end zone, it'll come out from the 20-yard line. Air Force, 14 to nothing over Brigham Young. 14 to nothing at the end of the first period. Kentucky, 13. Florida, 15. That's the final. And here in Minneapolis, it is 48. Minnesota has the ball with 10.49 to go in the game. They trail 48 nothing. Allen Holt in there at quarterback again. And they need some perks. They've got to travel a long way today to, if they get 20,000 yards. 
I guarantee you that in 10 minutes and 49 seconds, they might be able to put more than 48 points on the scoreboard. We had a crowd of over 64,000 here today. Many of them are trying to beat the traffic now in a game that's already been decided. That's Courtney Holmes, the ball carrier, gets it out to about the 23-yard line. But it's a great place to watch a football game. It's very comfortable, and it's enclosed, and there's not any cold weather. There's no wind, and you don't have to wear all those jackets and all those windbreakers. And what should be mentioned, Minnesota fans were hoping to have noise be a real factor in this game, but Michigan so completely dominated this thing right from the outset that it was only a factor very briefly in the first quarter. You're right. Second down, seven. Allen Holt firing, and this one is caught by Gary Couch. He'll be shy at first down. He's stopped at the 29-yard line. There's still some good hitting going on. Michigan obviously has an awful lot of their second stringers in right now so they're getting some good play and they want to show Bo just exactly what they can do there's the Michigan fans they're very happy today back to Ann Arbor and they're going home home in Arbor next week I mean uh, tomorrow nine minutes 41 seconds remaining the clock moving this will be a third down less than a yard to go for the first down has the first down out to the 36-yard line. Todd Schulte making the tackle for Michigan. Stuck through a little hole over on the right side with that quarterback option. Alan Holt, he, now he's a freshman. He's out there to perform. He's out there to show his wares to his coach, Lou Holtz. Ron, you're very close to the Michigan football program. When the season began, Bo Schembechler said, I'm going to have a better football team, but... I don't think he expected he was going to have the juggernaut that he's got right now. I don't think so either. But he's happy that he does. Holt keeping, pitching to Ed Penn now. And Penn gets across midfield. Down to the 48-yard line. That was a good was play by Holt, but Holt is hurt, and he's flipping off the field. Here's that young freshman. He got hit very hard on the leg, and it could be that he did injure a knee, so... Minnesota is going to have to replace him with Ricky Foggy. So Foggy checks back in as Holt is shaken up. And Holt was moving the ball, ball club today. Watch him here out, out here. He gets hit right here on the knee. You, you'll, you'll see just as he just as he pitches the ball, he's going to get hit right there. Boom. It's a first down at the 48-yard line of Michigan. Courtney Holmes unable to find any running room. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down. Doug Mallory in on the hit, along with Andre McIntyre. Penetration by that Michigan defense. That's what they've continued to do. That's what stopped that wishbone offense. You just can't run it if, if somebody gets all that penetration. If they're looking at his, maybe his ankle, I guess, instead of his knee. So Alan Holt being tended to on the Minnesota sidelines. It's second down, 10 now. Clock moving, eight and a half minutes remaining in the game. Michigan leading it 48-0. Back to throw. The pass is completed to Kevin Starks. Starks at the 35. Starks at the 30. Starks at the 26-yard line before he's brought down. There's a penalty marker at the 32-yard line. Oh, and it could be disastrous. Those are usually, if a guy's running like that, there's your flag. A good catch for 23 yards by Kevin Starks and a, and a good throw by Ricky Foggy, but it's a clip against Minnesota, so it's everything is for naught. And that sort of tells the story of the kind of day it's been for the Gophers. Even when they make a good play at 23-yard gain, they get 15-yard penalty. Ricky Foggy back to throw. Spot pick Kevin Starks. Starks knows what to do with the ball. He avoids a couple of tackles there. And he gets downfield. A clipping on the offense. Second down. Until Greg Randall and Tim Schulte bring him down. So that brings the ball, that clipping penalty, back to the 48-yard line, where it'll be second down and 10. Exactly where it started. And Penn goes out wide to the right side. Rocky Gaylord is wide left. And on second down, Foggy back to throw again. Can't find an open man, tries to run the ball, gets it to about the 45-yard line. He'll be seven yards shy of a first down. Marty Schiacco making the tackle for Michigan. Good coverage downfield by the University of Michigan. 
Nagy. Now 11 carries for 18 yards. There's that young man. There's Harbaugh. What a great day he's had. He's just a great performing, a very heady player. He waited, was patient, and led his team to uh, 48 points. And he'll be back next year. Ricky Foggy back to throw. Under some pressure, gets rid of it. The pass is caught by Cobb to the 25. Out of bounds at the 23-yard line. First down, Minnesota. David of, Arnold, the freshman from Warren, Ohio, back on the coverage for Michigan. Speaking of patience, Ricky Foggy certainly did there. He was being pressured by Tim Schulte coming over from the left side, but he threw the ball a little bit off balance, found couch, and it's a first down and 23-yard gain. So Minnesota hoping to get some points on the board against this highly touted defense. There it is, just like we told you. Nice throw into that zone defense. David Arnold could not cover. First down of the 23. Boggy keeping, coming toward the near side, lost his footing at the 20-yard line. A gain of about three. Jim Harbaugh. He's thrown for three touchdowns today, all of that in the first half. And it's done a great job. 12 out of 15, 207 yards. That's not a bad day, is it? 12 out of 15. Day. He was 12 out of 13 last week. I know. A couple of pretty good games back to back. Now he hasn't played here in the second half, either. Second down, seven. Foggy fakes the handoff. Heads to the far side of the field. He'll keep it himself. 15, down to the 10-yard line, inside the 10. First down. Well, the Gophers trying to get something on the board. We'll have a first and goal. Greg Randall made the stop for Michigan. Michigan has the substitute team on the field right now, but look at Ricky Foggy. He really can run that option. And when he gets you, when he gets you suckered like that, he's got to come see if he can really run with the ball, and he gets it right down to the 10-yard line for a for a first down. 12 carries for 33 yards. They mark the ball just inside the 10, so it's a first and goal with six minutes, 25 seconds remaining. Minnesota trying to get some points on the board here in the fourth quarter. The pitch is to Pudgy Abercrombie, and Abercrombie got it to about the seven-yard line. Garland Rivers making the stop. Ricky Foggy on the ground. Craig Otto checking in at the tight end spot. So now it'll be second and goal from the seventh. Michigan football team standing up on the sidelines. They don't want them to get in. They haven't had a, they haven't had but two touchdowns scored against them all year. Second down goal. Foggy back to throw. Still looking. And down he goes at the 15-yard line. The ball is loose, but I think it was blown dead. It was. That was Steve Fibert getting his hands on Ricky Foggy. Well, Big Steve really came in on Ricky, didn't he? Now, I'll tell you what, this defense is holding again. Watch Ricky Foggy coming out here. Seibert put that great pressure on him. Number 86, there he is. Look at him, great tackle, right down on the ground. A loss on the play, third down and 12, and third down for a touchdown. Now, maybe they'll hold him out anyway. The ball mark just shy of the 12-yard line. You can see the defense over on the sideline. These guys are really encouraging their belt. There's, there's number 66 standing over there, Mike Hammerstein. He's the first one out there yelling at his, at his, at his teammates on the field. No, no scores, no scores. Third and goal from the 13. Foggy in trouble. Now he's found an open man, and there is the Minnesota touchdown. Andy Hare on the receiving end, and for only the third time this year, a touchdown has been scored against Michigan. many people here but I'll tell you what they really are supporting this Minnesota football team Ricky Foggy very patient goes back to pass finally finds Andy Hare in the end zone it's a touchdown only the third against this Michigan defense well a moral victory of sorts for the Gophers as they get on the scoreboard here in the final quarter Tim Lowmiller with the extra point attempt it's good and it's the first extra point of the year. You've seen it here first. 
So it has not been a completely empty day for the Gophers after all. With 4.42 remaining, it is now 48-7 Michigan. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network. Here's the touchdown. Andy Hare. Roll out by Ricky Foggy. Finds him in the end zone. There it is. Touchdown. Only the third one of the year. The extra point. First one of the year. 13 plays, 80 yards. 607. And you saw, you see, that'll be a little bit of encouragement for Lou Holtz. He can he can really put his teeth into something. At least they got on the scoreboard. A lot of other people haven't been able to. Chip Low Miller drives the kick all the way into the end zone. Jamie Morris will not run it out. And Michigan will take over on the 20-yard line. We always got a lot of, we have to thank a lot of people. SID up here for the University of Minnesota. Bob Peterson and his staff, his assistant Tommy uh, uh, Greenhoe, who gave us that, that film on uh, on our pal Paul Giel, of course, Paul Giel, the athletic director, uh, Dr. Kenneth Keller, who is the president up here at Minnesota, and of course, those people at Michigan, SID, Bruce Motti and his staff, uh, our president, Harold Shapiro, and of course, my very good friend, athletic director, Don Kenham. Wherever you are. I'm sure he's smiling wherever he is. <laughs> Four minutes, 42 seconds to go. It's been all Michigan, 48-7. But this Minnesota club still playing hard. Doug Mueller making a stop there. For no gain, it'll be second and ten. You notice the discipline that Lou Holtz has put into their team. If you look at the sidelines, there's no dejection. They're all up there. They're standing up there. They're, 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 they're taking this meeting like, uh, like a team should, and that's Bo Schembechler. That's not Lou Holtz. Bo Schembechler should be very happy with his team today. 15-1 versus Minnesota. Lost, I think, in 1977. He has records like that about, against just about everybody. What a fine career he's had. On second down and 10. Ernie Holloway, the sophomore from Detroit, the ball carrier. Run that clock down. 3.50 left now. Can you believe that Wisconsin is leading Ohio State 13-7? The Buckeyes a little bit surprised at wow. that, I'm sure. And Wisconsin usually doesn't beat them. They, they've got a heavy hand on Wisconsin over the years. Nebraska leading Kansas 17-3 to uh, in the first quarter. And Oklahoma leading Colorado 7 to nothing in the first quarter. Here it is, 48-7 Michigan with 3-9 to go. We got a correction, 12-7 Wisconsin. Ohio State was driving for a score, and they fumble on the three-yard line. Nine minutes left. Wow, third down at seven. Interbrug hands the ball off to Holloway, and Holloway gets out close to the first down, about the 29-yard line, stopped by Bruce Holmes. I want to thank our pal, too, Jeff Elliott from the Big Ten office. He's been invaluable to us. Neat guy. Glad to have you back, Jeff. Well, we have truly enjoyed our stay up here at Minneapolis. Great town, isn't it? It really is. They got skyways. You walk around the whole city and you, you do shopping in, in every building. You walk the whole city and you never hit the ground. Bonnie Robbins in to do the kicking now for Michigan. Less than three minutes to go in the game. Andy Hare awaiting the kick, calling for the fair catch at the 27-yard line. 2.46. Now Minnesota should get into their two-minute drill and, uh, and get a little practice in. Two minutes, 46 seconds remaining. It is 48-7 Michigan. We'll be right back. Back here at the Metrodome, two minutes, 46 seconds remaining. It's been all Michigan, 48-7. Minnesota has the ball on their own 26-yard line. We may have another quarterback in, too, for Minnesota. A lot of people uh, heading for home. Roselle Richardson. Is, is that Roselle in there? I believe it is. Yeah, he's playing quarterback for Minnesota. He was in at a tailback spot for a couple of plays earlier in the game. Now he gets a chance to call the signals. Yeah, there you go. Out to the 30-yard line, a gain of about four yards. Tom Schulte making the stop. Well, Bo certainly didn't put anything on that he, uh, that, he that was uncalled for. He, Took his starters out in the third period and still leads 48 to 7 with 223 left here in this football game.
Mike Moe has entered the game now. He's coming out wide to the left. Roselle Richardson, the third quarterback used today by Minnesota. Gives the ball to Courtney Holmes, and Holmes gets it out to about the 32-yard line. So it'll be third down at about four. Our executive producer at Turner Network Television is Don Ellis. Today's game was produced by Rowan Backfish and directed by Michael Reardon. Our unit manager is Miriam Johns, our associate producer, Chuck Frankel. Our engineer in charge, Mark Brooks, and it's good to have Jerry Girard, our technical director, back on the job this yeah, week. He was in the hospital last week. We missed him. Roselle Richardson keeping, coming to the near sideline. He's got a first down all the way out to the 44-yard line. David Arnold making the tackle for Michigan. You mentioned all those people. I'll tell you what, it takes a great team to get this on. Here's a, here's a score, 12-7. to 7. Well, I'll tell you what, if that <laughs> score holds, Holy. everything's up for grabs next oh, week. Oh, is it? Look at this one. Iowa and Purdue, 14-14 in second, second period. We're having fun just watching the scores now. Clock Michigan leading 48-7. One minute, 12 seconds remaining. Richardson keeping. He'll get it out to midfield. About a five-yard gain. Todd Schulte has played a very good game in the second half defensively, making the tackle for Michigan. He backs up Andy Moeller at one of those linebacker spots, and we've called his name a lot in the second half. Well, it'll be a very happy trip back to Ann Arbor for the Wolverines. of eight wins, one loss, and one tie, while Minnesota goes to six and four. Long downfield, and the pass is incomplete. 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 Dennis Carter, the intended receiver. Doug Mallory back in the coverage. 30 seconds left. Watch this. Nice, nice try. Unfortunately, it was knocked out of his hands by Doug Mallory. The jug's going to Ann Arbor, where it's been for the last few years. Big John Falk, Michigan's equipment manager, won't let anybody get close to it. I couldn't even go look at that the other day when I was up in Ann Arbor. Third down and five, Richardson back to throw. Under some pressure back there, and down he goes. He tried to run away from that pressure, but Carlitos Bostic had a hand on him. Pulled him down, shy of midfield. There's the jug. <laughs> there is the jug. Still belongs to the Wolverines. Today's game has been brought to you by Republic Airlines, the only airline that gives you perks. You've earned them. <laughs> and by Nicolo Blight, super premium beer and a less filling beer. Who says you can't have it all? by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. For a thorough test drive, call your nearest BMW dealer.